Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all of the strange things in between, welcome to the Next Gen Retro Chat Show Live, where I am just a guy on the internet and I don't Google anything, so you probably should not take what I tell you as gospel truth. I highly encourage you to go and learn things on your own. If you hear me say something interesting that you like, Go check it the fuck out, Google that shit, read some shit, find yourself a spot that you think is reliable, and go with it. Um, tonight on the show, I'm having via phone my good friend and stand-up comedian, Josh Lay, who's a very funny guy, taught me how to write my very first joke before I had <laughs> ever been on a stage. Uh... And we're going to talk about some really great stuff tonight. We're going to talk about NASA, and we're going to talk about, uh, you know, just fucky shit that happens all over the place that, you know, people don't talk about enough. Sometimes people talk about it too much, but you know what? We haven't talked about it on the internet yet, so here we are. Uh, because of technical difficulties, Josh is only here via voice. Um, there won't be any video feed from him. He lives in the middle of a fucking desert that is infested with Bigfoots and aliens and uh, all kinds of other weird shit. Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Lay. Say hello to the people, Josh. Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? Dude, uh, before we get started, I need to bust your balls a bit. Like, I've downloaded... Uh, since we talked about doing this, like I've downloaded three or four different fucking apps to try to get in contact with you to do this thing, and then we just end up using the phone. I just want to say fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not that's not really my fault. <laughs> <laughs> fucking um, Jesse Sponberg told me about that Zoom to meeting thing that I had you install. And then yeah. I then I tried to use it and I was like, "Fuck this thing! It's fucking stupid." Like I, I could understand yeah, how you didn't, uh, bother, you didn't bother telling me that you weren't you gonna use that, so I ended up deleting it anyway because I needed. I I don't know why this phone will not. It's a Samsung. It won't let me save onto my fucking SD card, so all the fucking apps and shit have to go onto the main hard drive of this phone. But it's filled up with goddamn updates to shit, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, which okay. which uh I, which I, Samsung is it? I had to get a uh, bank app to bank mobile app downloaded so I can fucking deal with my car payments and shit. But uh, it's one of the it's not a Galaxy. It's one of the like fuck I don't know. It's not a Galaxy Note or anything, but it's one of the. Samsung family fucking uh, things. Yeah, yeah. Like one of the 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 not top of the line ones. Yeah, no, it's dude, I'm not paying more than sixty bucks for a phone. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Yeah, me either, dude. I well actually I think I paid like because I have Metro PCS. Um, yeah, that's what I went through. I think I paid like a hundred bucks for mine, maybe maybe a hundred. Definitely not more than that though. Like, I don't care. I was talking about it. I, I like that they don't take any information. They've got my name and my credit card, but other than that, they don't fuck with me. Like, I don't have any paperwork. I have one of the uh, pay-as-you-go plans, a $50 unlimited, so, like, uh, I pay my payments due on the 4th. I pay my shit on the 25th. <laughs> you know, so I'm good with them. Yeah, uh, I just like the fact that I buy the phone and, you know, I don't pay for that stupid fucking $5 a month rip scam. I don't buy that because, dude, when you, can, when you can buy their phones, and they, these are phones, you know, if you do want to spend the other hundreds or, or thousands on a phone, they have the phones available, but, like, dude, I just say, fuck it, give me, give me something that can text and do internet and maybe call a bitch or two. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. Pretty much, I man. Don't get my Xbox. You know, so I'm good. Just give me the basic communicator. You know, I think I was talking. It might have been. It might have been on the show. Um, 
it might have been elsewhere but basically i was saying like technology has come to the point where a shitty cheap phone can do everything that you want to do with a phone or like might need to do with a phone if you're yeah, yeah, yeah. i think i think that was one of your episodes you were talking about that but yeah you know a forty dollar phone does everything you're two thousand dollar pink iphone does yeah absolutely (laughs) you know i have thought about getting a fucking more expensive phone for the video camera yeah because the newer like higher end phones like the galaxy s10 and the fucking iphones and shit they take really really good video man really good Yeah, there's a couple uh youtube channels i watch that they a lot of times when they're uh, their job takes them out of town. Like they just use their phone to do their video, and I can't tell any difference from when they're using their you know, home setup. The video quality, anyway. So. Yeah, I watched you know, a uh, comparison video between the Ari Alexa camera, which is um, one of those like you know multi hundred thousand dollar fucking Hollywood super dope cameras. Oh, right. Yeah, like the Cinema Red. Yeah, yeah, it's the competitor to the Red. The Ari Alexa is like the equivalent of a Red, just from from a different company. I knew a guy that uh, that bought one of those. Well, he had the bitches fucking buy one of the uh, two of those uh, Cinema Red cameras, five thousand dollars for the camera. Just it's the same one that Peter Jack, same model, everything that. Uh, Peter Jackson used to film uh, King Kong or whatever the fuck. And, uh, but yeah, like, it's, you don't stick, like, a, a phone drive in those things. They have a, basically a hard drive that you can plug in. Yeah. You know, plug into the damn things. But, like, dude, I, wa- I watched him, like, edit. Like, he, uh, he filmed a comedy show. And, like, you get, like, Frame by frame, like, very, like, fucking, like, I forget how many, like, a billion of a second, like, the captures, you know, frame by frame, like, you can isolate. Like, it's just ridiculous what you can do with that camera, but, like, unless you're, like, doing a video or something, you know, making a movie or anything, it's way too much fucking camera, dude. <laughs> yeah, no- it's, a, it's a lot of camera. <laughs> And they're and they're really fucking complicated, and one of the ways yeah. that they get you on those, well, I guess they don't get you because if you're in the market for that kind of camera, you're not getting got. You know what the deal is, but when you buy the thing, you get the camera body only. You yeah. Get no lenses. Yeah. You don't get no lenses. You don't get no flashes or lighting. No nothing. You don't, man. You don't even get a fucking lens cap on that bitch. <laughs> Five thousand dollars gets you in the door. Now yeah. You gotta buy a <laughs> Do you know the uh, YouTube channel Linus Tech Tips? Have you heard of him? Uh, I might have kind of across it, dude. I'm like subscribed to like so much shit, and like uh, <laughs> I'm subscribed to so much, and like what I end up usually watching is like just the quartering, which is this video game news, dude. He's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I I kind of hate that guy actually. It's funny that you would mention him. Yeah, you hate you. I I kind of fucking hate that guy. He uh, really? yeah he he got uh so back home in Indiana, in Indianapolis we have a convention called Gen Con. Yeah, and that dude got his ass beat at Gen Con, and like yeah. he was telling everyone like, oh my god. You know, I'm gonna kick your ass, and we're gonna have this fight, and it's gonna be like, we're, you know, I'm a tough guy and stuff. And then like somebody like punched him in the face, and he called the cops like immediately. And I was like, bro, that is that is not cool. You don't do that. You don't tell somebody that you want to enter mutual combat with them, and then when they punch you in the face, you fucking call the cops. That's like such a bitch move. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know he did that. Yeah. But... So like I lost a lot of respect for that guy. Like if either you don't want to fight, and in in which case you should just not do that. You should just not engage in that kind of stuff. Or and he ain't about that life. Is that that's what you're right? Right. He is not. He is not about that life. 
I can't. Dude, me, me and you used to be about that life, though. Fucking definitely, you can't work at the uh, AAV and not. Uh, <laughs> working oh my at, god! Uh, yeah. You, could not, you had to be. If I at least on my shift, like Gray's, it was. I was more a bouncer than I was a salesman. Oh yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Um, and I and I mostly did Graves when I worked there too. For those of you at home, uh, in a previous life, Brad and I were uh, foreign close. We were uh, ran a till at a uh, all adult video out in Milwaukee, and uh, it was a place that uh, this wasn't no Spencer's bullshit. This this was like whole uh, gory hole in the wall fucking video arcade in the back. I'm on the floor, porn shop. Like, yeah, it was, this was a Kathy's. It was fucking gross. And no, we didn't clean the floors. That they had a. That's considered biochemical, and that's by the state law. You have to have a ha- state uh, handling license and be gloved the fuck up and like bleach the shit out of everything. No, clerks didn't do that. They called in a special janitorial service. And those mu- it was high the shades as fucks too. But, like I swear they didn't always come every night. <laughs> no, they did not. Or like they would always come at like really different and weird times. You wouldn't be able to predict when they were gonna show up. You'd just be like, Oh Yeah, and like there's one dude that, like, if the door was, like, just, like, if it wasn't wide open, he wouldn't clean that room. Yeah. Like, yeah. dude, you at least try, oh, try to turn the knob, man. You got gloves. Don't give me that bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. That job was fucking They're cool, fun. though. I miss that job, dude. Especially when I was at uh, LibWorld. Dude, what I miss most is that, uh, you didn't you don't have to eat shit like the current job I've got now I don't want to like dis- disclose my current employment thing but it's in the corporate world within caregiving shit but like you gotta tiptoe through the tulips with these motherfuckers man you just can't say you shut the fuck up you dumb bitch <laughs> I guess at the porn store man you could like throw a motherfucker off and be like Somebody starts cussing. Ah, fuck you, man! I want my fucking money back. Get the fuck out, you stupid motherfucker! I'm gonna <laughs> crack your fucking head open with a stick. Yeah, yeah <laughs> there was, there was no, you know, there was no uh, write-ups. There was no referrals. There was no. Uh, you're gonna have a, a meeting with HR in the morning. There was uh, no HR. Uh, yeah, it, it was simply fucking. Live or die. That was it. That was it. <laughs> Do you remember the name of that older lady that uh came and and worked in the office at Susan. at AAV? Susan. Yeah. yeah. She was cool. Suzanne. Yeah, Suzanne. Yeah, she was really cool. She used to say some yeah. funny shit. Yeah, dude. I mean, she was a tough. She was a tough lady, man. I'm sorry. Like, if you got a if you can let work there any length of time, man, like longer than like a week or a month or whatever, but you've got you got serious fucking balls, you know. It's like I consider like work at the porn shop like being a marine, man. You know? Yeah, <laughs> you're you're buddy sister with everybody who's ever worked behind a till in a fucking place like that. You know, that's a fraternity. It's a brotherhood. It's a <laughs> It's different now. Like I, I went, I go um, to pick up every month when Exotic comes out. I go and I, I snag a copy of the magazine so I can see like my shit in print. Cause even like two yeah. or three years later, it's still really fucking novel to pick up a glossy magazine and be like, shit, that's me. Yeah, uh, man. The, <laughs> uh, even GameStop kind of push, push the digital copies of the uh, game on for on you know. Dude, I will never in my fucking life read a digital magazine. I would rather I would rather never read a magazine ever again in my life than read a digital magazine. Yeah, I don't like. I I have uh, viewed. I have uh, gone the way of piracy and gotten like uh, comic books online. And it, it's just not it's not the same. It's only because like I can't afford it or I can't 
you can't find issues in the wild. Yeah. Like uh, Josh we- or Josh Whedon's uh, Astonishing X Men line from like 2005, I think. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, the whole first, like he he wrote uh, the first 12 issues, and that was like some of the best X Men I ever read. But good luck finding any of those fuckers like cheap. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, I'm not. I'm not paying twenty to fifty to two hundred dollars for a fucking comic book. I'm sorry. <laughs> I will. I will see that. I will read the motherfucker. <laughs> Trust me. I will find a way to read. But I'm not going. Well, and why would you read a two hundred dollar comic? You would. I wouldn't do that. I would not handle a two hundred dollar comic. Not with my hands. Well, like, I, would like, I would like to read uh, like the, like the amazing stories. Whatever number that the first issue with Spider Man, I nobody I know who even has a shit copy of that would let you fucking read it. No. I won't read it. I won't. <laughs> and like the way to do that is like digital, like with the people who have scans or whenever they do, uh, you know, whenever they put out shit. But yeah, I, I um, that's how I ended up reading the uh, the. Walking Dead series, because I had, I, I got the graphic novels, but I couldn't find all of them, so I just uh, downloaded them and, and read them on a comic well, like I've got the, the original Marvel Civil, or I had my other fucking laptop fucking just took a shit on me, but uh, I had uh, at one time all of those, uh, every issue, like even the, uh, not just the main bits, but like every issue that uh, came out that this lasted about a year, uh, like every issue pertaining to the Marvel Civil War on a torrent, and that thing was awesome to like be able to read like a lot of stuff. Like at that time, I was collecting, so a lot of those I had. Like I have the uh, issue of uh, Captain America where he gets shot, assassinated on the courthouse steps by Red Skull. I got one of the uh, variant covers to, for that one. Nice. I actually had the physical copy, but like I, I, I was collecting at that time. And like, there's no fucking way I was gonna. You, I had the money at the time to like buy every fucking per- pertinent issue to that. So I just kind of, you know, collected the main ones. Uh, there was like a cool issue of Wolverine and that whole thing where uh, he gets he gets blown up in an airplane or some shit. And it like the whole issue, like he gets blown up on like the second fucking panel of this thing, <laughs> and like the whole entire issue is like him explaining the pain and like the regeneration process, because like he was this after this plane exploded, he was just like a fucking eyeball in the in the titanium skull. But like <laughs> this like, whole issue is just the uh, the whole regeneration process and like you know like what he's you know. You can like feel, oh, yeah, the tenants finally keep growing now, and like, shit, like, this is a really fucked up, fucked up issue, but like, it, it's one of those little side, side issues that I didn't buy, and it was finally cool to finally read it. And, when you were know, a kid, get, when you were a kid, did you go to the comic book store, like, once a week and, and pick up a I, bunch of new comics? I, I'm a military, I'm an army brat, so, uh, I would always go to the Stars and Stripes bookstore, man, and like, okay. Yeah, I had I'd always buy Punisher. I'd buy issues of Transformers if, if they had one in that I didn't have. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is Marvel's Transformers back in the day. Mm-hmm. And uh, who else do I read? Uh, occasionally I buy Spider Man. I like Spider Man. I just didn't buy a lot of Spider Man. Yeah. Um, who else was like? You know, I'm also Punisher, man. Like I used to have quite the fucking Punisher collection. There was a uh, forget the storyline, but there's a time where Spider-Man and Punisher, uh, Darkhawk, and Moon Knight were fighting these other six uh, six dudes, and it was like a uh, it was a really cool fucking story. Arc. I don't remember much wasn't of it. Venom, just... Wasn't Venom involved in that story? So, no, no, no. And it wasn't a Sinister Six. It was just this really quick thing. And like, uh, it was. I thought it was a really cool crossover. The story was interesting. And then like, nobody, nobody but me has apparently ever read this fucking thing. <laughs> weird. That's really weird. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I. 
I like comic books. They used to be cool. Well, they're they're still cool. I mean, it's it's just uh, the new ones aren't as cool. I don't think. Oh, like uh, I, this will probably uh, be a good way to lead into the NASA thing eventually. But uh, part of the Marvel Civil War, like, all right, remember the uh, school shooting in Newtown, Connecticut? Well, the whole thing on the Marvel Civil War that uh, happened started off with the New Mutants. Uh, um, they were like doing this TV. They were doing a, like a reality TV show where they were like apprehending uh, the New Mutants were apprehending the uh, you know like the, uh, bad bad su- bad superhumans and like uh, mutants and stuff and like a uh, mutant cops basically. And uh, they're going after uh, Nitro. And like he was taking this, uh, basically, uh, uh, human growth hormones for mutants that made his uh, firepowers like you know, like 50 times stronger, and he ended up blowing up, uh, killing a whole bunch of innocent people and a whole bunch of the uh, new new warriors. And uh, it happened in guess where? Newtown, Connecticut. <laughs> And this was like before the whole school fucking thing, like five years, six years before. Huh. If you're all, if you're into uh, predictive programming at all. Well, I think uh, well, predictive predictive that's programming when, that's is fucking started. fascinating. The uh, the um, new mutants blowing up people in uh, <clears throat> Newtown, Connecticut. It's what started the Mutant Registration Act, or the not the Mutant Registration Act, but the super, the super power human uh, registration act that Tony Stark and all of them. Uh, what the Marvel Civil War was supposed to be about, it wasn't like what they did in the movies. Like they barely touched on the registration thing at all, which is really sad. Yeah. But, um, <clears throat> But then, like, right after Newtown, Connecticut school shooting, that's when they started trying to pass all the gun registration laws and stuff. So if you're into predictive, you know, Hollywood is uh, being run by the CIA and pushing out uh, (laughs) stuff beforehand. Well, I don't know if, if, if it has anything at all to do with the CIA, but it might. I'm not saying it doesn't, for sure. But I do, I think the, uh, all the shit about the Simpsons, man, all of the things that the Simpsons have predicted. Yeah. Like, right down to yeah, weird details. Yeah, yeah, I've watched a few things on that, and like, yeah, I mean, they put a lot of wacky things out there, but there's a few of those things, man, that they, like, nailed to a T. That's the whole like, truck yeah. coming down the escalator thing? <clears throat> That's insane to me. Yeah. Like I could watch that I could watch that on a loop, just that like comparison shot from the Simpsons to the real life thing that happened. I could watch that all yeah. fucking day because it's insane. It's fucking crazy how accurate that was. I mean, you can call so it an accident. Like, he's gonna put a dome over a city. <laughs> it's possible. Just being like, all right, these people—they are not getting out. (laughs) So I was watching um, right before we started doing the show. I I told you I was I was looking for uh, like a kind of refresher stuff about NASA because I know we wanted to talk about NASA because I think we both are uh, pretty interested in it. But like, I I didn't find anything really that was shit that I didn't already know. Uh, yeah. But one thing I was watching was, um, you know, Watch Mojo, that, like, they do the like, the top fives and top ten videos and shit like that? I, I, I might have. I don't, I don't recall right off the top of my head. Well, they're, they're a fucking huge YouTube channel that, um, basically does trash content, like, listicle content. Um, yeah. Shout out to my article in Exotic Magazine, which is a top five article because listicle content is trash. Um, but I write it There's professionally. Top five articles about the be- best top five articles ever. <laughs> Dude, I actually I have an article due on Wednesday um, for the August issue. 
and I have nothing. I have no ideas. I have no idea what I'm going to do. Uh, and I seriously consider doing my top five top fives. Like, that thought actually crossed my mind. I was like, I don't fucking know. And I'm not even... Dude, I don't think Ray even reads my shit anymore. I think he just publishes it. Yeah, great. Fuck it, whatever. <laughs> as long as he's writing them checks, man. <laughs> yeah. Although I always... It, it always takes me forever to get my checks, but that's fine. Whatever. It's not that much money, so it's just like... It's money is money. <laughs> spending money. I was um actually today uh looking on Amazon because I'm gonna buy a new pair of headphones for the show. Uh, yeah. Monitoring headphones, and I uh, I'm kind of torn between the Audio Technica um, M30s, the uh, Sony. There's a pair of Sonys. I don't remember the fucking model. Um, and then the Sennheiser HD 280 Pros. But I think I'm going to go with the Sennheisers because they're only like $99. And that's a fucking steal for a pair of Sennheiser studio monitor headphones. For all you people out there that don't know anything about headphones but have a lot of money, <laughs> um, buy some fucking Sennheisers because they're the shit. Um not the ones I'm talking about. You won't enjoy them because the ones I'm talking about are flat signaled monitoring reference headphones. So like if you're listening to music like on your phone and shit, do not buy the HD 280 Pros. They're not going to be good for you. You won't like them. But uh, if you're out there mixing your own audio or doing a podcast and that kind of shit, they're the shit, bro. Everybody's doing it. It's like drugs. Like weed and shit. <clears throat> so, uh... I was thinking about um I was thinking about the NASA thing. And when what do you think about people who say that the ISS is fucking fake? That there's nobody up there um and all that shit is being filmed at like fucking a studio. What do you think of that? You know, I don't think it's too far fetched. I really don't. Uh like, I've watched a few things where it looks like, you know, it looks like they're tethered on a line when they're, like, you know, and in the background going side to side on the space station. You know, that looks like, mm. you know. Uh, then there's, like, times where I've seen some video where it looks like uh, like some sort of uh, air bubble or something appears. Like, mm -hmm. on screen, you can visibly see it. And, you know, there's been, there's been a few fucking things fishy things that, you know, it doesn't make sense. And, like, you, I, they say it's just within, you know, just just outside of, you know, just so, you know, just at the very beginnings of outer space. So why the fuck can't you see it with a telescope, you know? Well, they say you can. I, I've, I've heard people say that you can, but, um, and I've seen... No, I'm talking about see inside the tube... With a little, a little hole, a little window, and see dudes like you know trying to bang the shit. <laughs> I, 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 that's, I'm not talking about oh, there's a shiny blip that you see that little, bleak, that little light blinking. That's a space. No, fuck that. I want to see, you know, the t big giant can and the window and all that shit. <laughs> okay, I, I just don't. Uh, you know, fuck. The whole like NASA man, like it just. For years, they just go, and, oh, well, NASA says this, and, like, you know, nobody questioned it. Well, NASA says it's th it, this, this, you know, this is this, and it has to be true. Like, they've gone for decades, you know, probably since this inception without people ever questioning any of their shit, and now that, you know, people are questioning them, like, you know, just, like, say the Apollo moon landing. I read where they don't have any of the telemetry data anymore. Like, it was on disk, the big, like, these 20-inch floppy disks. And, uh, they, oh, well, we copied over it. Why? Why would you copy over that fucking data, you goddamn moron? Well, we didn't have enough floppy disks, and we were short. We didn't have, we, we couldn't go down to, you know, Radio Shack and buy any. <laughs> well, <laughs> it wasn't in the, it wasn't in the budget to send an intern to fucking Walmart. 
Yeah, like you don't have a thumb drive, motherfucker. Like, right. And we're talking about NASA, man. You can send a man to the moon, but you can't buy another disc. What the <laughs> fuck is that? Well, you know, you know, I was I was looking at the uh, budget for NASA. I think it was 2018. It was either 2016 or 2018. Their budget was 18.4 billion dollars. I'm 18, pre- yeah, 18.4. That's, that's, that's just on the record. That's not. I don't. I. I doubt that's all they get. I really do. I don't think that's all they get. Well, they have. Um, they also get money through the Department of Defense. Uh, to maintain defense satellites. So there is other money that we can we can pinpoint for sure. Um, what do you think about um, what do you think about like NASA? So okay. Right, well, what about you? Do you think that the space station is like legit? Do you really think that? Because they don't like everything. They they talk about how totally weightless it is. I'm like, if they wouldn't their hair be all fucked up and waving around and shit? Like, uh, just to me, like, I don't know. There's this. Uh, I'm not 100 percent sold on it. Well, and like, I'm not willing to make a hard and fast fucking statement that I do or don't believe. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm. Not- I, I'm not. I'm not really. I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical. I'm very skeptical. I'm very skeptical, and my opinion is really fluid. Uh, yeah. I want to believe NASA. Like I think the difference between me and a lot of people who question NASA is I want to believe them. I want everything they say to be true. I just I struggle with some of it. Um, the space station itself, I think, is probably up there. I, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't do that. But I'm one of the things that kind of concerns me is that I think that there are three levels of space programs. I think that there is what we call the public space program, which would be the lowest level, like level one, right? We'll say level one, two, and three. Um, That is the ISS missions, um, launching satellites, um, all that shit, like. The Hubble Space Telescope and yeah, all that all that stuff that is like public knowledge and and, and is on the news all the time. And then I think that there, yeah, yeah. I think there's another. No, I, I, go ahead. Yeah, I think no, I, I I I completely agree with you. Like I think like you know the shuttle missions and all that hokey bullshit. I think that's like it's like Disneyland. That's a teacup ride, but then like there's a dark sinister shit, the Club Thirty Seven shit or the Club Thirty Three shit that you know Disney don't talk about a lot. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and I would say that that is there's so there's NASA, and then there's what a lot of people call the secret space program, yeah, which is mostly military. I think that yeah. I think the ISS oh. is not the only space station up there. I firmly believe there's a much larger one. Reagan and Gorbachev and fucking, you know, the Star Wars program, like, they were spending billions, you know, um, hundreds of millions of dollars. There's supposed to be this fucking disco zappy laser system floating out there somewhere. Yeah. According to Reagan, you know, where's the, <laughs> there a laser zapping, laser zapping, missile destroying flying Porsche up there? <laughs> flying oh. Porsche. It's a Lamborghini Countach. Yeah. Isn't should. there something out there? There's All the, that tax money went somewhere, didn't it? Yeah, the Star Wars it's program. I remember that when I was a kid. I was uh, was pretty young, but I remember it. My parents talking about it. Oh, Star Wars, Star Wars, and I was like, "What? We're going like in the movie? Like Chewbacca's real?" And they're like, "No, this is a different thing. It's about like putting like lasers in space so that we can f- shoot down missiles." And I was like, "What the fuck yeah, are you talking I, about?" I, I, there's supposed to be this like giant laser net system of fucking nuke zapping satellite or something, right? Is that a th- is that not a thing? I yeah. noticed that none of the pictures uh, NASA ever shows of Earth ever has that shit out there. <laughs> well, I think uh, that Star Wars was the last time that they publicly disclosed what the fuck they were doing with the defense construct in space 
So I think that that's where you get to level two, right? Yeah, but like another thing about that is like I wouldn't completely doubt, I wouldn't put it past them that there was no Star Wars project other than in paper to help uh, uh, accelerate Russia, uh, communist Soviet Russia to bankrupt themselves because that like they started building tanks and those uh, IL-72 bombers at a huge fucking rate after. And mm-hmm. you know the mid to you know early to mid eighties, uh, and that's like that was a huge reason that the Berlin Wall fell, and eventually uh, Russia, like the communists, basically bankrupted themselves. And people, I've read a lot of stuff that gives Reagan and Reagan and uh, the Star Wars project big, big credit on that, and that the whole thing was basically just, <laughs> to, you know, if Russia built. 30 meg 29s, and we'd go build 50 uh, F-15 Eagles to, you know, was that that was the kind of money games that and chess pieces that they were trying to build on the board during the Cold War. And, but, you know, I, I won't put it past it. It was just an economical fucking farce to, you know, pay off buddies and fucking try to bank Russia, uh, bankrupt Soviet, the communist Russia, and the you know, along at the same time, but again, you know, where's the fuck? Where, where's the fucking money, Lebowski? Where's the fu- <laughs> where's, where's the, the money fucking to- money, Lebowski? You know, where's <laughs> where's the space shit? You know, where's goddamn X wings flying around waiting for fucking Russian nukes to fly coast to coast? <laughs> we believe in nothing. <laughs> but again, you know, that's why there's nothing that, in space. That, that had to be along with that shit, and they, that's a that's a huge. Re- I would be highly skeptical of NASA just that alone. Fucking, they talked about how to be a part of the Star Wars project. They took money for the fucking thing. What they make with it? <laughs> and it was like a lot of 1980s dollars. Yeah, I don't remember how much, but it was a lot. I remember that the amount was staggering to child yeah, like, to child me. A billion dollars they were ta- I've seen. Not I don't know how much that would be today's money, but still that's fuck. You know. So I'm worried about making you know my car payment, which is not in the millions. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think about um? What do you think about the influx, uh, or as some people call it, the brain drain from the rest of the world? Uh, Project Paperclip and all that. We brought in all of those Nazi uh, rocket scientists and, and physicists. Stop. Cut that short. You, when we brought in all those Nazis, because like, they didn't just bring in rocket scientists and shit like that. They mm-hmm. brought in high high ranking Nazis, like fuckers that were like, that were shook and took reports for fucking Adolf Hitler on a fucking daily basis. So, uh, I, uh, I, I, go ahead and finish your question. <laughs> well, just what do you, I think that that plays into the, so, World War II ends, we take all the Nazis and we bring them all into the fold, um, we know that the connections between U.S. businesses and Nazis are just like balls deep, like there's... Brown Brothers, Harriman, Ford, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, IBM. A whole bunch of for- yeah, there's a whole bunch of Fortune 500 companies in the United States, Britain, France. Like that's a uh, before before we get into what you're about to ask. Like, let me throw this out there. Uh, anytime there's a huge like transition, like the Nazis went, or you know Germany went to like red being a wheelbarrow full of money to like they're leading the world in industry, uh, technology, and they that shit happened from like when did World War II end? Like uh, 1916, but like in 1939, they're the most high tech um, country in the world, and how did they get that way? All right, you know, when Bray was a wheelbarrow full of money, they didn't find, like, some, uh, you know, they didn't find admantium, you know, they didn't find a, a whole bunch of diamonds, they didn't discover a brand new, you know, gold or 
you know, mm-hmm. they didn't have a huge technological, you know, breakthrough. Fucking they didn't have a huge economic breakthrough. Fucking Nazi they... super gold. Yeah, you know, <laughs> people don't realize that fucking they were they were built. People were giving them money, giving them uh, presses, giving them you know uh, heavy heavy industrial presses and shit like that to get things done. Yeah, I mean, they didn't, you know. But nobody ever talks about that. That's never mentioned. <laughs> and what do you, you know, think how... about what do you think about the idea? Now, keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, watching this show, we're just two dudes on the internet. We're not saying that any of the stuff we're saying is absolutely right. We're guessing on dates, we're guessing on amounts, we're we're reasonably well read on this topic. So like I would say we're like qualified to have a water cooler conversation about this which is pretty much what this show is let's let's be realistic um there is a lot of talk and a lot of of speculation saying that okay so let's just assume for the sake of this conversation that we have contact with aliens and that they've been hiding that from us right there's a lot of speculation that says the most negative species that we have contact with uh and most people say is the reptilians they were just super close with the nazis they were like best friends they were like oh man you guys just want to like kill people like us too let's team up let's fucking kill people like we're like we're best friends now um and that oh the, you like sex and money too we should hang right <laughs> I see you're pretty gangster. I'm pretty gangster myself. Um, so a lot of people say that n- n- Nazis got their advanced technology and their advanced weaponry from reptilian aliens. And at the end of World War II, all of that got transferred to us. That really... I'm not saying uh, America is, is like the Fourth Reich... But I don't. I, we're not the nice guys that everybody wants to make us out to be, you know. No, absolutely and, not. And and it's not uh, inconceivable that if Nazis had alien technology, that when we just annihilated everyone in World War II, uh, all that shit came here with the Nazis that we all took in like they were our long lost brothers and sisters. Like, oh shit, we were killing each other yesterday, but today we're homies. Um. <clears throat> so do you think Nazis had alien tech? What do you think? Um I don't know about alien technology, but I do think that uh like it's just it, Well let's they say had hook up. somebody they had to hook up from somebody well, and like what if I made the disclaimer by alien technology what I mean is Highly advanced new physics technology may it doesn't have to come from aliens. It could come from like Warner von Braun. I I don't know or care where it came well, from. Like, uh, the, during World War II, the Nazis developed uh, the the, Go, the Gotha two twenty nine, which was a flying wing, a jet powered flying wing. It, uh, a lot of the B two stealth bomber. A lot of its design is taken from uh, the Go- the Gotha uh, 229. Mm-hmm. This thing was a flying wing. It had no uh, uh, vertical stabilizers on it at all. It flew. It was like it flew like at 600 miles an hour. It was jet powered. Uh, it had, like this thing was the shit at the time. But like it was built like right towards the end of the war. I think it was like 1944 is when it first flew. And so it, like, mm-hmm. I don't, and <clears throat> I don't think it, I don't think I had more than six to eight months of uh, combat, but like it, it was, it was a huge leap in, you know, everybody, we, the fastest thing we had was the uh, P-50 Mustang. The yeah, P-51. I was going to say the, the Mustang. Yeah. And it, it could only do like 450 and that was in a dive. Mm-hmm. You know, it didn't have a. I think its cruising altitude was like 450 miles an hour. Um, so it did when wasn't the Spitfire, or that was British, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the um, the P51D was uh, powered by a Merlin engine, which was British built. 
Yeah. And here's a fun fact that's not exactly conspiracy related, but it's interesting nonetheless. Having gone to Purdue University, a lot of my friends um, were in the uh, aeronautical engineering uh, department, and a lot of yeah. my and a lot of my friends went on to work for Rolls Royce because uh, Rolls Royce makes the best aircraft engines in the world. So, in addition to dope ass cars, Rolls Royce is making fighter plane engines. So, a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. Really cool shit. Uh, BMW. One of BMW also built uh, plane engines. In fact, uh, its emblem is supposed to mimic a uh, propeller spinning. Oh, interesting. I don't think I've ever yeah, heard that. After World War II, they were uh, like part of the uh, armistice. Germany signed that all their um, BMW and all their other uh, engineering companies weren't allowed to build combat aircraft or shit anymore. And that included engines and shit. And so. That's why a lot of them went into cars. That makes sense. You got to transfer all that infrastructure to something. Well, yeah, also, you'd see that that influence as well. Like all these uh, defense contractors and shit, all these in, d defense engineers that were like building B seven, designing B seventeens, and all this kind of shit. You see that they went, you know, they had to work after the war. So they went into, like, you know, uh, Detroit. They went into all of the uh, Ford, Chevy, and all these other uh, car companies. And that's why you notice, like, after World War II, man, you see a lot of, like, the same kind of cock cockpit design in the car that you'd find in uh, bombers and stuff like that because they just, like, transferred what they knew into cars. A lot of them were old, uh, you know, defense contractors, defense engineers and shit. That's why you see... Uh, uh, there's a couple cars that had push button transmissions, and that was from uh, directly from uh, cock, airplane cockpit designs. Yeah, I remember those push button transmission cars. I, I drove a couple of them when I was younger. There was more of them around back then. <laughs> Do you think it's yeah, weird? I, Do you think it's they, weird they, that they had some shit? The Germans they had some shit though, man. I mean, and it was just. So above everybody else's, uh, I I don't know where those ideas came from, man. Like, <laughs> what about that weird UFO thing that they had, the the flying saucer thing that they built? I don't remember what it was called, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, um, I do a lot. First of all, I'm a huge airplane nut, so like I used to. I used to build gaming rigs that would be able to handle the newest flight sims and shit. Like, uh, two of my favorite uh, flight sims ever was Falcon 3.0 and Falcon 4.0 because, like, they had... If those were, like, so realistic that, like, uh, it, like, Air Force, like, would use them sometimes for their guys. But it was, um... Yeah. I, um... Was I going with this? The the flying saucer thing. The, yeah. the, the Nazi well, flying uh, saucer Secret thing. Secret Weapons of the Luftwaffe, I think, had that. It was a PC game by Lucas. I remember uh, that Lucas game. Arts, yeah. I remember that game, yeah. Uh, the expansion had that on there. But, yeah, uh, that thing was trippy, man. Like, again, um, where the fuck they get that design? Because, there, again, there's nothing in the air anybody else had at the time that looked at look for anything like that so i think it's fair to say that nasa wouldn't exist the way that we know it today without nazis no not at all uh <laughs> you know von brown was a card carrying nazi like he went to the same orgies that himmler hitler and fucking you know all those guys went to he was not just he wasn't just Fucking Albert Einstein with the funny mustache, man. He was no, and he was in he the was he was in the like, Duel Society. <clears throat> he he was all he was deep into the like the the occult secrets oh, of the Nazi yeah. Third Reich. And that's what I want. I want to put it past that the, they got the whole reason why they were able to get that these technologies was like. I, you know, they're a cold fucking devil worshiping shit, dude. Like I could see it being an influence from some sort of demon or something. You know? 
I mean, they they were heavy into that shit. And you know, um, this is actually the second time on the show that I've talked about Nazis as much as we're talking about them now. Um, the other time was when Jesse came on. Um, yeah. Uh, we talked about it. I don't remember what it was in reference to, but um, it's important to know that for people that might be listening that don't have any uh, background, uh, because they don't talk about the stuff anymore. Um, you can go on YouTube and, and watch all kinds of cool documentaries about World War II, but it used to be shit that got shoved down our throats growing up. Most of the stuff that we know about this, we don't know about it because we're, like, fucking super interested in it. I mean, although we are, but it, we know it because it was just everywhere. It was on the History Channel every goddamn day. Um, and the Nazis were super deep into the occult. There's the Thule Society... There's the Vril Society. Uh, all kinds of crazy shit. They were channeling spirits and shit. And like you said, having weird orgies and blood rituals. Well, uh, one of the uh, newer uh, Castle Wolfenstein video games, uh, I think the one that came out, what was it 2005? Like one of the first. Are you talking it about New out. Colossus? No, no, no. It was one of the... Uh, it's like well, on the early days of the 360, uh, Return of Castle Wolfenstein, I think. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, like, it, the part of that was, uh, touches a lot about um, the Nazis' search for their occult and, you know, their ritual things that they would do and shit. And, I mean, it, while it touches on it, like, it, it's all based off of documenting shit, like, all these fucking things that, you know, they were... They were huge in defining religious artifacts and stuff like for the uh, for the power that they thought it, that they felt it contained. Like, yeah, they were they had, just to get into the uh, the higher circles of the SS. You had to uh, go through a, like a, a, a bones manipulation. It's, it wasn't just being a good soldier. <laughs> yeah. And you had to you had to fit the physical requirements too. Hold on, sorry, I'm looking for my bottle of water here. I don't know why I'm telling you what I'm doing. You can't see me. I'm used to people uh, coming on the show via video. And ladies and gentlemen, we did try. Um, right now, Josh is literally in the middle of the Oregon high desert, so that he can get the best data signal possible. And he called me on Skype uh, before the show, and I was like, Nope, this is not gonna work. Uh, so then we tried it audio only Skype and I was like, nope, that's, that sounds like shit. So that's why you're getting, uh, Josh via an old fashioned phone call today. Just so you know, uh, we did try. I think it was the first time I've used my phone for an actual phone call in uh, years. <laughs> yeah. You're the only person I call. But yeah, I I don't know, man. I I mean, I do know that they had a lot of smart motherfuckers. It's just, and they they did so like they. It's just amazing that they had almost every major scientist, like everybody, like it's like rocketry was birthed in Germany. Yes. <laughs> yes, most definitely. Um, like it's. So, okay, so we've talked about, like, level one space, which is, like, NASA and, and the sh regular shit. We've talked a little bit about level two, which I think is mostly military. Um, I think there's definitely other space stations up there. I think there's a military space station that's much larger uh, than the ISS. Um, and then there's also a third level. And that third level, I think, is why I brought up Nazis, by the way. Um, I think it's a breakaway civilization. I think it's in no way related to our civilization. I don't believe that they need our money. I don't believe they take our money. And I believe that a lot of people involved in it were probably born off-world and have been told that the Earth is gone. I don't think they'll ever come back here. I don't think they've ever been to Earth. I don't think they've ever seen Earth, and I don't think they ever will. Now, I don't know. It, like, this is all speculative as fuck, obviously. But 
what I do know is that we have funneled like a third of the global domestic product into segmented special access programs. Where the fuck did that money go? Yeah. Right? And as time has moved forward, the, we've put less money into it. So if you are funneling off or siphoning off a third of all of the money that's produced in the world, why? What? What are you doing? Like, if you're not what? building giant fucking spaceships, what the fuck are you doing with that money? Yeah, like I've always found it odd that we've never replaced the space shuttle. They said, "Oh, it's just cheaper if we just piggyback our projects on the, you know." Japan or China or whoever's rockets payloads going up. Like, really? We're just... <laughs> it's not the American right way to rent the, you know, to you know, flag down a cab. You want to go out and buy a car. That's, that's the American way. We don't fucking... <laughs> you know, we don't ride the bus, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, never, I just... No... Not long ago, like a week or two ago, I listen to a interview with a former uh nasa engineer who worked on the the space shuttle project and mm -hmm. he was talking about why it failed and and why we stopped doing it and he said that the number one reason that the space shuttle program was a failure is the same reason that the f-35 jet is a failure NASA wanted to build it to do a certain thing, and then the military was like, mm, we needed to do this other thing. And we have, like, more money and more influence, so... Mm, don't get me started on that piece of shit F-35. That thing is expensive and it underperforms. Like, I've, I'm, me being a huge jet guy, I've read a lot about this fucking dud. Like, the plane that they should be investing that money into... Is the F-22 Raptor because it, but statistically and like you know, it handles, it performs way better than anything else in the air, except for uh, uh, well, and you can't really trust Chinese, uh, but they they got the Chinese has a really awesome new fighter that they just rolled out. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I don't think it, I heard about that. Yeah, it was. But uh, it, the thing is, nobody knows like if anything, any of the reported statistics on it are like real because China's notorious for like, you know, it goes, it goes Mach fifty eight million. <laughs> you know, like, it, it barely breaks one thousand on airspeed. You know, or anything. Oh, like, you know. It goes warp fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> like the F. F like the F thirty five is a, a like a prime example from stuff that I read of like pork barrel legislation and uh oh let's let Frank do it because Frank Frank's company needs to work or else they're gonna go under kind of shit and like it's just a really it's not it's not it doesn't it's just barely better than the F fifteen E well I really. I'm sure you've heard that it started out as a fucking badass jet like. But the F fifteen E can do the same roles that the F thirty five can for like half the cost, a half the operational cost and a half like the cost per plane, F fifteen E kicks its ass every day and F fifteen E can handle itself in air to air just as well. Uh, and the F thirty five is not it's built to be like more of a, a ground attack aircraft. It it needs cover. That 15 e doesn't need cover because they can handle itself in the air just fine. Yeah, yeah. So like, it's just F 35 is a fucking dud from a lot of stuff I've read and talking to dudes. You know uh, what we need? We, what we really need is an updated version of the Apache, the Apache gunship. Yeah. Then we have. What about the Comanche? Is that? Well, I mean, it's, I up, to... it's updated in like a like a '90s kind of way, but I mean like a 2020 version of an attack helicopter. Well, like the thing, like my my dad was in the army and he went to he was part of Desert Shield, Desert Storm back in '90 90, '91. 
but uh, he would tell me that like the Apache was like it was great, but like fuck, going in the desert and shit, man. You they had uh, all the mechanics had a bitch of a time keeping those motherfuckers in the air because sand gets all in a fucking helicopter engine and shit because it, you know. If you know about the way the helicopters, you know, the propulsion of helicopters, it's like sucking wind up through those fucking blades. So all that fucking sand is sucking up and gets into the fucking rotary blades and the fucking engines and shit. Yeah, and isn't, and so aren't like, the engines on the Apache's pop- jet engines? Huh? Aren't the engines on Apache's jet engines? They're not jet engines, but they have like... They had those uh, part of the turbines are on the side. Those two, if you see, notice on a Apache, like right underneath the rudder blades, there's those two things that sit off to the side that look like engines. Yeah, like those intakes. are part of the motors. Those are part of the motors. But yeah, uh, like they're going to wear helicopters because of uh, you know the, we're trying to blow the shit out of the Middle East right now, and like helicopters don't do well with the fucking sand. And so, um, and like, yeah, I think the, the thinking is they're trying to do more VTOL at aircraft, like jets and stuff, versus helicopters all day. It's just because it's just, you know, the, the, co- the cost of maintaining Apache is high. That's the huge cost of the Apache. Like, yeah, they're you know, really, really fucking expensive. Well, they're fucking phenomenal height. You know, they're very technical, dude. Like, dude. The gunner, when he turns his head, that chin cannon, that 30 millimeter cannon on the chin of the Apache, that bitch turns too. And yep. he raises his head. The head, the head movement of the gunner moves that fucking terrorist. Yeah, and don't they chin. have eye tracking? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, my brother, uh, my older brother, he lives in Lincoln City now, but um, you know the company FLIR? Uh-uh. Uh, the forward-looking infrared... Um, yeah, that, oh, okay. That, that company. Um, yeah. They're in Portland. Really? Yeah. At least they were. I don't know if they are now, but it, around like 2005, 2006, my brother worked there. And, um, oh, shit. Yeah. He still can't tell me what he did. Or, well, I guess he could. I mean, he could be like, fuck my NDA. I'm going to tell you everything, you know. But, yeah, anytime I ask him about it, he's like, yeah, I worked there. Well, what did you do? Uh, you know, worked on infrared. I'm like, okay, cool. But the weird thing is, is my brother's <laughs> my brother's a graphic. Just... He's a graphic designer, so like the chances are pretty good that all he ever did was fucking put buttons on their website. <laughs> so I don't know, like, what he's trying to fucking hide from me. He's he's not a physicist or like anything like that. So, um... <laughs> I uh. <laughs> Oh, You're dude! Do you, Papa, speaking of people, <laughs> speaking of set. people I know who worked for fucking crazy <laughs> shit, Tony's mom worked for Lockheed. Oh, really? Yeah, they. She grew up in Las Vegas, and her mom worked That's at Lockheed, good. and her mom knows Bob Lazar. Really? Yeah. Did she work at the Skunk Works site, or did she work yes. at a different? She worked at Skunk Works. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I mean, she won't tell me shit. She won't tell us shit. Like, she'll say, yes, I work there. And at uh, yeah. at her parents' house, they have coffee cups from Lockheed. Like, with uh, stealth fighters on them and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, uh, I remember uh, when, every, when they were, when uh, everybody thought there was an F-19 stealth. It ended up, uh, F-19 eventually just was... Uh, was the F-117, but, like, you know, before they were able to get enough information about it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I remember when that shit was huge. Like, I remember reading some stuff that, uh, like, they've had, they, that they were developing stealth aircraft, like, as, earlier, as early as the 50s, like, even before the uh, U-2 planes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I've been hearing about that recently, too. A lot of that stuff has been being declassified as we speak. It's 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 gotten old enough that freedom of information will garner uh, details about that stuff. Yeah. Well, and you know, the SR-71, which uh, everybody knows about, the SR-71 Blackbird, uh, started flying in the 50s, uh, flew 
I think into the late sixties, uh, and it was replaced just... with the Aurora Project. Um, and I don't think I don't think the Aurora Project has ever been shown to the public, to the best of my knowledge. I don't even know what it's actually called. The Aurora was a code name, so it's not yeah. called it's not called that. Uh, but it's the replacement for the SR seventy one. It's in service right now, and no one's ever fucking seen it. Yeah. And that's interesting. Well, I, I mean, I've and that's not conspiracy things. shit. That's just real shit. Yeah. No, I've heard different things about the Aurora Project. Like, I've heard it's a, a type of engine. I've heard it's an a, an actual aircraft. Like, I've heard several different... I've read and heard, watched different things about it. Like, nobody seems to have a 100% idea. At least, you know... Not anybody that, credible. Know, not anybody credible and nothing that you can, like... See, there it is, flying right there. You know, there's no pictures or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think um, from on, uh, one of the flight sims I used to play in uh, early early 2000s was uh, a, one of the Jane's flight sims, and they had uh, one of the planes on there was was the Aurora, and it was like the fastest plane on in the game. It, uh, but like it didn't have any guns or anything, but it just was fast as fuck. Like there was not, it was mostly a, a spy plane, but like nobody could catch that motherfucker. The uh, oh. the from what I gathered, and I actually wrote a short story about the Aurora project when I was in my twenties. Um, it was like kind of a cyberpunk thing that I put on a blog, and it was a terrible story, but the premise was good. But um. What I found in my like search for information about it is that it's both it's not exactly the chassis of the plane is is the Aurora project. The Aurora project was the combination of the high speed engine, high speed high altitude engine and extraordinarily advanced navigational computer. That's what that's what I heard because from from memory here, and I'm talking about shit that I read about like fucking 15 years ago. Um, the the plane itself was so fast it couldn't be flown by a human. Like it couldn't be, you couldn't uh, course correct fast enough. Your reactions couldn't possibly be fast enough. So they had to have this really advanced forward looking uh, radar navigation thing that used a uh, LIDAR, I think, or something, to see shit and, and react to it um, in real time, but faster than a human could. And that's what the big secret was about Aurora. It was like, we have this technology that fucking super fast jets can fly themselves because humans can't do it. What do you think of that? Like, uh, SR-71 like, was, I think, if I remember correctly, from it, it was, had a top speed of something like Mach 3, and there's Air Force pilots that would swear that it could do Mach 5. Mm -hmm. so, and for like, anyone and, listening that doesn't know, uh, Mach is in reference to multiples of the speed of sound. So yeah, Mach, Mach uh, 1 is one time... Each time. Yeah. One time past the sound barrier. And it, it varies depending on uh, altitude. Yeah. The higher up, the less... The less speed it takes to re achieve Mach. But effectively, if you saw an SR-71 flying, you know, full tilt, like flew over your house, which it never would because it would be too high to see, but just imagine it did, you would see the plane fly by and you wouldn't hear it for quite a while. It, it'd be a while before the sound caught up to your sight. Kind of uh, like when you see it. Hmm? Living on air bases, I've seen it. Like I've seen S sixteens and F fifteens. Like you'll see, you'll see it, you'll see them just take off, and then I'll, you'll hear the fucking the sonic boom. Like three or five seconds later, it's really fucking weird. And like you can tell the moment that they hit it, cause like all the, any kind of like condensation or anything on the plane, it just fucking clouds. There's just a boom. Yeah, the the visual of that is amazing. It's so cool to to see, like the the pressure wave around the plane. Yeah. 
fucking fighter jets don't fuck around, man. <laughs> There's a reason why they cost. That's... No, they're fucking super cool. I mean, outside of the world of conspiracy, just like real shit that you can go on YouTube and look at. I mean, if you haven't, if you're watching the show and you you haven't watched footage of uh, fighter jets, go do that. Just go watch a compilation video of like any fighter jet from from like the 50s to now it's it's fucking amazing if you haven't seen that shit it, they do things that you don't you watch them in movies and shit and that kind of with the suspension of disbelief thing it, it, it doesn't make it real to you but when you watch actual footage of a fucking like an f-16 it's crazy they do shit that that you wouldn't think is possible to do you know, and it's fucking amazing, you know, really cool shit. I highly recommend that people go check that shit out if they haven't already. Um, so, okay, kind of back more into the, um, the, the more kind of secrety conspiracy e stuff. Do, do you think that the government has access to advanced secret, advanced technology stuff like, I don't know, um, Electrogravitic craft, stuff like faster than light travel or um, advanced high energy weapons, shit like that. Do you think any of that stuff is real? Do you think it exists? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think uh, I, def I know they definitely do. I mean, just because they don't show it a lot or, you know, I think they do have it. Like, uh, Voice to Skull Technology, there's a guy doing a TED Talk about it. And like he mentioned that, you know, they they have technology now where they can place uh, with a, you know, a frequency 5G. They can put a voice inside your fucking head that you swear to God, that only you can hear. Huh, that's and crazy. They say that they, the, the thing that they, they can build this thing for $70,000 and the, the guy, the... Uh, the founder of the company says that they can't build them fast enough for the fucking government. Wow. And like I remember, I remember stories in the first uh, go, the first go for you know the uh, Desert Storm. Uh, there's a story of like 86 Iraqis surrendering to uh, troops because they heard the voice of Allah tell them to put their guns down and to surrender. Huh. I don't think I've ever heard that before. Yeah. That's crazy. Where did you hear that? Did your dad tell you that? Uh, I read it once somewhere, and then I've heard, you know, some uh, talking to GIs that served in the Desert Shield, Desert Storm, mm -hmm. uh, tell me about this story. That's crazy. That's really fascinating. I'm going to have to look at yeah, that. Yeah, fucking 86 Iraqis. They came in, fucking threw down their fucking AKs and just fucking knelt down in the fucking sand, hands behind their head. And they're all, uh, and when they were asked why, they said, fucking voice of all out to us, throw our fucking guns down and get down in the goddamn sand. And so, it, and I, with this uh, one Iraqi guy, it's like, it was really weird because it sounded like a loss from Texas. And you now uh, all these shooters, like the, the kid that shot at the theater in Aurora, Colorado, uh, the kid from um, Parkland, a, a lot of these, uh, you know, crazy white kids shooting people stories. All these kids are saying, "Yo, I heard a fucking voice. I heard a fucking voice kind of go by the fucking gun. I heard a fucking voice." You know? I think that I think bringing that up is an interesting segue into um, MK Ultra. Maybe they're not fucking crazy, man. Maybe they, they maybe they're not just you know crazy white kids who didn't have a friend. Yeah. Maybe, you know, yeah, maybe. I, you can YouTube. You can YouTube uh, targeted individuals, TIs, uh, people who are who say that they're being uh, targeted by ultra frequencies that give them headaches, migraines, ear mm -hmm. bleed, ear and nosebleeds. You can see this shit happening to people. And that, if you read anything into ultra high frequencies and stuff, side effects from people being hit with sound waves or you know, high frequency waves is headaches, voices, bleeding from the uh, nose and ears, you know, 
you can see people doing this shit all the time, and there's uh, you know, people have want gotten settlements when they've been able to prove it. So I don't, I, I don't doubt people at all that say that there's technology like that out there. What do you think uh, about MK Ultra and and trauma induced yeah. programming? I I think there's plenty of. I think a lot of celebrities are being. Are going through it. I think Britney Spears, that breakdown that everybody t- you know makes fun of. Mm-hmm. I think that was a, uh, you know, she was tired of being the blonde goddess that they're passing around on all the sex rituals and stuff like that. And you can see that because she, what, what she do? She told, was telling everybody, get the fuck away from me. I'm tired of being used. And she cut her head, her hair. You know, she's mm-hmm. trying to distance herself away from the. From the thing that made her the most desirable to her handlers and the people of over. Uh, Martin Lawrence, he had a breakdown. Remember oh, yeah, yeah. Buck naked in the middle of the street with a gun. Yeah, running down the street with a gun saying they're trying to fucking kill me. They're trying to fucking kill me. And Dave Chappelle. Yeah, you know. Dave Chappelle he, talks pretty openly about it. Yeah, he talks about it also in uh, uh, a great... Great, uh, uh, the inside the actor studio, James Lipton. Yeah. The episode with Dave Chappelle is some of the realest mm-hmm. shit I've ever watched in my fucking life. I highly recommend everybody to, uh, go watch that after you get done listening to it. Yeah, I totally show. agree. Like, That's that fine. is some of the best interview footage you'll ever watch. Absolutely. Because, like, Dave talks about, you know, the, the real power behind the, you know, the scenes about shit. Mm-hmm. You know? He's, yeah. You know, he talked, you know, that, that shit, that thing of what he's talking about, you know, and men in tights, well, I don't want to wear a dress, you know, like, the, I, really, I really believe that. I think they absolutely fucking, they try, to, they try to, you know, push people into this shit. I think the reason why there's some people that are like, uh, you know, you ever notice why certain uh, celebrities seem to have a way fucking longer career than others? And, like, some people who are really fucking talented, they have, like, five movies and then they're done. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> well, and okay. also, also, um, some celebrities are allowed to walk away and, and go and live a life, and other celebrities are not. They're They're destroyed. Their lives are destroyed, their character is destroyed, their families are destroyed. And that's not, you know, okay. They don't have to kill you, they don't have to kill you anymore, I mean, like, physically kill you anymore. They can kill you by making your name disappear. They can kill you by fucking bankrupting you, you know. They can kill you by, oh, let's, let's, uh, let's say you're a kid fucker. You know, mm-hmm. they'll say you're a fucking pedophile, and we got you on tape doing it. Yeah. So what do you Nobody think about me. speaking of pedophiles? Um, I neither one of us are uh, a supporter of, of Donald Trump or really any other president that's ever existed for that matter. Um, <clears throat> I think we're both we're both bitches. We're both pretty apolitical in the sense that um, we have a definite sense of right and wrong, but we also know that everything they tell us is a lie. So we don't really listen to it. I think that's true for both of us. Um, yes. But w- one of the things I thought of. Uh, so I found out today that that Epstein got uh, is is getting indicted for sex trafficking. Well, um, uh, who's doing the indictment? I I don't know. I don't know. I need to look into it more. I didn't have time to look into the details today. Uh, but. Um, from what I understand, it, it it's got to do with his uh his fucking you know sex island whole fucking pedophile fucking island thing that everyone has talked about. He's going to time. almost everybody. So the island that his uh, Lolita split airplanes uh, cargo manifest reads as a who's who of Washington. Yeah. And you know, the global elite power structure. Yeah. <laughs> that. Yeah. That that pedophile ring. So I mean the one that goes along with uh Pizza Gate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. How the hell does a fucking pizza man be voted uh Washington DC's most powerful influential man? How right. the fuck does that happen? He makes yeah. really good pizza. Duh. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. He's got dominoes uh, on lock, bro. 
He's like, uh, oh. we're answer me this. Uh, I've I've looked into this for a while, and I have not found a fucking clue. Where did Epstein get his fucking money? <laughs> I have no fucking idea either. Honestly, yeah. I have no idea. Um, I meant to. Actually... He hangs out with Phil and Harry all the time. Hangs out with Donald. Hang out, hung out with Barack a lot. Uh, this dude. This news the who's who of political power and always seems to rub elbows with all the right people. Hmm. Loaded as fuck. Where is he? You know, but no, his W-2 doesn't have a job. <laughs> well, you know, you and I were talking earlier. I made the joke. Well, he gets all of his money selling kids. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. I mean. I wouldn't doubt it because, like, you know, it's like during the camp last, the last quote-unquote election, like, Hillary did not go after him at all about the Epstein shit. Well, no, because Bill like, was on that fucking jet all the goddamn time. So it was Hillary, though. So Hillary's name came up just as often as Bill's. Did it? I don't remember yeah. that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking yeah, no. crazy. That's fucking crazy. No, but ever wants to talk about Hillary's sexual fucking... But just imagine, if you will, just just imagine a fucking scenario, right? Um, one of the people I really respect, Eric Weinstein, he's a he's a mathematician. He likes to say, imagine it were true, right? Because he's a very precise person. He never says anything. Yeah. He doesn't speculate um, as a rule. But when he does, he always says, imagine if it were true. Uh, imagine if it oh, were I true can't. that... I have to start eating, huh? Yeah, imagine if it were true that Donald Trump is only acting like a fucking psychopath and, and just basically pissing everyone off every fucking day so that no one pays attention to the fact that he has presided over a, a presidency that has indicted more pedophiles than any other president in history. And that's true. You can look that up. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not making that up. That is a factual statement. But imagine it were true. If all the stupid, crazy shit he does is just like, look, I, all I need is four years. Give me four years, and I will fucking lock up all the, the kid fuckers. What if that were the case? You know? And and I wonder if anyone would ever... And, and we are not Donald Trump supporters, so don't fucking email me about... Uh, don't, don't fucking comment on my shit, and don't fucking email me about it, because we don't give a shit. We don't care about the dude. Um, he's a fucking piece of shit, and he can eat a dick. And whoever follows him as president also can eat a dick. I don't, I don't care. Um, it's all a control system. But what if he kind of snuck in under the radar and is like, okay, well, I'm just gonna act like a fucking crazy person, and no one will notice that I'm doing this other thing. What if, what if that's the case? Yeah, but I, I'm curious as to. Uh... Who the, who these pedophiles are, and like as a, anybody like that who operates in any kind of any kind of any kind of consequence, they have handlers. They have somebody above, somebody that you know watches out for them. So like, I'm wondering, is this just uh, you know cleaning out the competition? You know, is that what he's doing, or like you know? What, I don't know what I'd have to read more on what the what the uh, you know what the prosecutions are coming stemming from, but I I think there's got to be something I, going I, on I, with this dude. There has to be something going on with this dude. There's no way that he has made I, it through life alive being as fucking crazy and stupid as he is, or appears to I be. I don't know, man. I just I. I really don't think the president, the president elect. I don't really think that he has them. I really do think he's just a fucking. Uh, 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 the late great Patrice O'Neill said it best: "The president don't run shit. He's like a Thanksgiving turkey. It's just a tradition. He don't run shit." <laughs> yeah. 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 I, that, and I, I agree with that because I don't like. Dude, think of the last three presidents that we've had. Bush, Obama, and uh, Mr. Trump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What the fuck are the vice presidents doing? Dick Cheney, you know, 
Big Cheney, big nobody like after nine eleven, nobody knew where that motherfucker was for like six months, and then all of a sudden, you know, he he just appears behind, uh, you know, George on some press conference and like, where the fuck have you been? Nobody asks many questions where that motherfucker was at. Yeah, you know, same thing with Biden. Biden was doing a whole. Here's something that a lot of people don't know, and this never ever comes up. Uh, you know. Obama strengthened, not only like renewed the oh, Patriot Act, but fucking strengthened it. Fucking gave it a lot more fucking rake to it. And, but here's the thing. Joe Biden, you know who, what, why Joe Biden's a huge fucking cocksucker, despite the fact that he probably, you know, imagine if it was true that he is a pedophile. Like, uh, I'm sure you've seen the C-SPAN videos where he's whispering in these little girls' ears, and you can hear him say some inappropriate shit. This is on C, you know, C-SPAN. You can hear him fucking whispering dirty shit to these little girls, man. But uh, Joe Biden wrote the, orig- the original version of the Patriot Act in 1997. He was one of the lead architects of it. Well, that doesn't surprise me at all because he is definitely an establishment politician. Yeah, he, he was part of the group that wrote... Uh, what would, what would later become known as the Patriot Act. He was one of the first authors. He was one of the big uh, signers and uh, formers of it. So that's why it should come to no surprise that uh, Obama was one of the huge, hugest violators of civil rights as, as far as like legislature, because uh, you got you got uh, the NDAA. You also have the sh- uh, strengthening of the Patriot Act. Another little thing that nobody uh, ever seems to bring up is that he, uh, back in the 80s, uh, uh, Reagan signed into this thing that uh, allows, uh, it was a White House order something. I forget the exact number. But it enables Interpol uh, come into America and arrest people and take them off, but they have to a announce that why what they're doing in that district, like that the local no, no, uh, notify local authorities that hey we're in town we're looking for this guy here's a warrants this is why we're in town and we'll work with you guys but we really need to grab them and we need to extract the item back to fucking France or where the fuck mm-hmm. it's the Interpol app yeah. Obama signed uh, a thing adding on to that Interpol Act that now Interpol doesn't have to notify local authorities that they're operating in in town, and they don't have to have a writ, they don't have to have a warrant, they don't have have to have a fucking legitimate reason whatsoever to come in, grab your ass, and detain you indefinitely. Yeah. That's a fact. And Interpol is fucking terrifying. I'm not going to talk about why I know that Interpol is terrifying, but I'm going to tell you that they are fucking terrifying. They're an extraordinarily powerful law enforcement entity. (laughs) They're they're the international police, and they, you know, it's it's no bullshit, man. They fucking, (laughs) they come in and they operate deep, and they don't have to answer to fucking nobody. And now they don't have to answer to anybody in the United fucking States. They could grab... They can come to my truck right now, drag me out of the fucking thing. I'd be like, bye, Brad. They're taking me away. They're not- <laughs> well, considering some of the stuff we've been talking about, it wouldn't fucking surprise me at all. It wouldn't surprise me at all if you were like, holy shit, dude, there's a Jeep here. Like, what? Oh, man, they got flashlights and guns, dude. They're coming to my truck right now. I'd be like, oh, yeah, that makes oh, sense. Man, and nobody talks about this. And Obama signed this, man. He... He did more to fucking ruin civil rights in the United States, and nobody fucking wants to talk about it. It's fucking scary as fuck to think that inter- if you if, just do a quick Google search and go uh, Interpol and uh, illegal detention, and like go to like page three, skip the first two fucking pages in the Google search because those are always usually bullshit. Go like page three or four, and you'll see some fucked up things. You will find some fucked up shit that Interpol agents do to people. Like they, they can get, like we have Abu Ghraib. That thing's still working. Mm-hmm. Interpol's got spikes like that far five times as fucking worse, and nobody but the fucking Interpol agents and you know you when they fucking drag your ass knows where they're at. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
fucking scary, man. Like, uh, you ever seen Face Off? Yeah. You know that mm-hmm. prison that they send him to that's like just out in the fucking ocean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only way to get to is like a helicopter or a boat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, I was actually, uh, I don't remember who it was, but I was, t- I was talking to him the other day and I was like, you know that shit's real, right? Like CIA black sites on on container ships, that's not like a movie thing. They really do. Yeah. That. Yeah, they really do that, and for good reason sometimes. Um, one of the things I like to try to do is I I, I don't want to just sit here and be like, okay, everything's a lie and and blah 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 blah. I also want to point out that some of the shit, shady, fucking business that the government gets into is absolutely fucking necessary. Um, it is fucking necessary as fuck in certain circumstances that we take dudes, put them on a fucking helicopter, and put them on a container ship that just constantly fucking sails around the world. Why? Because they're that goddamn dangerous. There are people out there who are legitimately that dangerous, and we kind of have to do that shit to them, because we can't just blow their fucking brains out, because if we did, they'd be martyrs, and we can't make martyrs out of people that dangerous. Um, so I do want to point out that, um, while I'm against the government lying to us about everything that they do, I'm not necessarily against some of these behaviors because they're necessary. Um, for example, uh, everybody thinks that Pablo Escobar died one way, and that's not true. The way that Pablo Escobar died is he was assassinated by a sniper, um, a CIA sniper. But they don't tell us that. That's not reported. It's not in the official story. If you go watch Narcos on fucking Netflix, that's not how Pablo Escobar dies. But that's necessary. He was a CIA informant. He was on the fucking CIA payroll. (laughs) He was a CIA operator, man. Well, nobody gets that amount of power without fucking the CIA. Without being balls deep into the CIA. Same thing with fucking Noriega. He was a fucking CIA stooge. They had to get rid of him. Who, Noriega? Uh, Is that what you said? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Saddam Hussein, he worked with the CIA for a while. During the bot party shit. Uh, Osama bin Laden. How the Bush family bought their first fucking oil fields to start up Duke Energy. from the fucking bin Ladens and the Saudis. Yeah, they were like fucking buddies with the Bin Ladens. They were really close. Yeah. Their families were really close. Yeah, they, they used to fucking call uh, George, Papa Bush uh, Bandar Bush. Because they fucking hung out with the Bin Ladens so much, they called him a fucking son. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we've talked about a lot of stuff. We've we've covered just a, a lot of topics and, and interesting stuff. And... And I, I want to repeat to everyone, we are not necessarily saying that everything we're saying is true, but imagine if it were. Imagine if it were true. Imagine if everything that we've said tonight is true. Now, if we are imagining that it's true, what do you think is fucking going on? The big picture right now, today, if a gun to your head... What is the big story? What is the big picture? What's the move? What's going on? What do you think? I I think the big push is uh, a, a world government. Because uh, uh, it's just every... With, uh, especially with everything being pushed to the cloud, everything being, you know, in, oh, everything's going to be in the cloud. No more paper. Nobody, you know. I think it's a big push to, like, Strip away individuality, and I know that sounds weird with like all the a lot of stuff that's going on. Like, oh, they're trying to, they're, you know, they're, it seems like they're trying to push individuality with you know, with you know, alternate lifestyles and stuff like you know, everybody should be able to do whatever they want, and like it's everybody has a, is an individual, but they're they're not because it's they're pushing. The thing is to like it's divide and conquer, and like as they like people say, well, if you think they're going to do one world government, then why why don't they start the little countries first? Because if the United States decides to do something, 
fucking everybody in on the North and South American continents are going to fall in line with what is the United States. Yeah. You know? And yeah. like it, in Europe, if they get if they get Germany, France, and England on board with something, then the rest of fucking Western Europe will fall in the line. And once Western Europe falls in the line, then fucking Russia will go to Russia, China, Japan, fucking India, and all the other shit. So, and then, you know, once you got, the, you know, the United States and, you know, all the Western European world, then, you know, at that point, you've got, you know, when you've got... Hard place. You've got all the railroads. You've got you know the green side of the board, and you know you know your Marvin Gardens and all that owned up on you know the Monopoly board. Who gives a shit who owns Connecticut Avenue? <laughs> you know, you've, got all other, you've got all the other big real estate on the board. Who gives a shit? They'll they'll fall in line or they'll die. You know. Well, that's what I. It's all heading for it. Like, get everything on the cloud. Get every like. Uh, I don't know if you read what they're doing in Estonia. They're like 97% everything is electrical or, or smart now in Estonia, and they're trying. They're hoping by 2025 to have even your uh, bio bio data on a chip or a card. Like that's fucking. That the scary thing behind that is like you buy a cheeseburger, that cheeseburger might end up costing you fifty dollars. So like, oh, with your health, you know, your current state of health, we got to charge you, you know, unhealthy tax. So now, you know, your McDouble now costs you nine hundred dollars. That's a fucking scary thought. Yeah, think about it. That's a that's a yeah, scary well, thought. I've never thought that thought before. That's a new thought for me, and that's scary. Yeah, so, you know, whenever you, I hear about, oh, what, we, why don't we just put your data, no, fuck you, don't, I don't want no, I don't want any RFD chips in me, I'm not, uh, I don't, like, I don't even like at work that I have to, <clears throat> when I clock in, I have to fucking put my fingerprint, I don't type in my ID badge or anything like that, I gotta fucking roll my finger over this fucking scanner, I don't like them having that on record. I'm not that I'm gonna steal shit or anything like that. I just, why the fuck do you need my fingerprint? Yeah, it's fucking weird. You know, when I was um, shortly after I moved to Oregon, I went to college for political science. Um, and uh, one of the papers I wrote in an international, uh, I think it was an international business class, was uh. The, the assignment was write a paper either in support of or um, against globalism. Um, and my argument, and I think this kind of ties back into the whole NASA thing. My argument was, well, a world government is absolutely necessary. And they're like, my professor made me defend that point, obviously. And he was like, okay, well, I read your paper and I want you to defend your point. And and my defense for it is, okay, so imagine if we do make contact with aliens, and they show up, and all of us speak a different language, all of us are fighting with each other, and only like four countries get along. Who are they going to talk to? And why would they want to talk to us? We are basically, if aliens are real, and, and we haven't contacted them yet, we're basically like the redneck neighbors. Like, we've got, like, an engine in our front yard, and we're, like, drinking beer and, like, butt-fucking our cousin right in front of the whole neighborhood. Like, nobody wants to fucking hang out with that. Nobody wants to talk to that. Like, imagine meeting a girl, a beautiful girl, way out of your league, and then you find out that her life is a goddamn shit show. And you can't go into that. You can't go into crazy, right? That's exactly what we are to the to the galaxy. We're We're not good people. We don't do good shit so if we at least have a, a unified government one voice reaching out to the stars at least then we can have an organized conversation at least then they're they're likely to be willing to talk to us and if you have that if you have a, a, a world government you also have a more stabilized currency and less inflation overall 
um, and a better way, a more efficient way to allocate resources. So that was my, my paper, was in support of a one world government for those reasons. Um, and obviously there's a million negative things about doing that, and it's there's a million excellent arguments against it. Um, and obviously it was just a college paper. It's not like I'm fucking running for president and I'm going to take the shit to the UN. But uh, yeah, that's that's a thing that I've 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 been thinking about for a very long time. Our our mar our march towards a globalized government. And do you think I don't think it's a good idea. Do you think that the euro like the European Union, do you think the European Union is a precursor to that or do you think the European yeah. Union well, will I fizzle think, out? I think I think it all started out with NATO, and then NATO became eventually United Nations, because you had you know the Warsaw Pact with the communist countries in the you know sixties mm -hmm. and seventies and fifties, and then you know now we have the UN, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that I think the European was like all right, let's see, let's see if we can unite, let's see if we can get these fuckers to go, you know. Let's see if we can cheat these fuckers, get them, you know, to go under one fake fucking banner so we can rob them all in one easy transaction. And I think, it, yeah, I think it was just, uh, you know, what the uh, uh, the New World Order, the heads of that, like your your uh, Zabrinskis and all those that were ar have been architects of this shit forever, and, you know, the Rothschilds and all those guys. Mm -hmm. I do think that it was organized to, like, you know, like I said before, you know, if we can, if they can get, it's not about all these little small countries and shit, you know, who gives a fuck if, uh, you know, Australia don't, just, if, you know, doesn't globalize, who gives a fuck if New Guinea does Because if you can get, you know, you can get the big pieces off the chessboard, the fucking pawns will fall. Absolutely. There's no, there's no doubt about that. You're breaking up. I kid. You, you, you let your boy play with Legos. Like, what, if you open, take the Lego box, you dump it on the floor. What do you do? You pick up, you, know, you, you start piling it up. You don't just try to grab all the fucking Legos all at once, all of them, all in one big armful, and then dump it in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, know, you grab a whole handful of here, and you, you know, you pile them up here, and you get it up. Smaller piles together to throw away the you know, you know, It's not one big pile goes into the right back into the box. You pile them up. You know? I think that's what part of the European Union is. It's uh, trying to uh, you know group together one of the major, one of the biggest uh, political and financial powers. And you know that was the big thing was to you know the big fight now they're fighting is to keep you know keep Britain in it. Because they're, they're trying to fuck. They're trying to get out. It's like uh, Germany, I know Germany, they will want to fucking bail out of the European Union too if uh, if um, Britain goes. And they might just have their own little fucking trade deals and say, fuck all y'all. Because <laughs> yeah. that's who most of our commerce is, is with anyway. It's mostly Britain and Germany with occasionally a little, uh, France, France's big trade partner, Spain. Is, mm -hmm. You know, so I can, I totally see where uh, European Union is, just like a precursor to help get, uh, eventually lead to a one world government. What I wonder yeah. is, the, with the U.S. being kind of a, a lone wolf out there as a superpower, I mean, obviously we have um, competition and we have allies, but we're not a part of the European Union um we're a part of NATO and the UN. But, yeah. um, I heard stuff they're trying to do a, a, like an American Union is what I, one of the terms loosely that I've heard of being described as well. And what, which is basically, is, you know, the big partners would be Canada, U.S., and Mexico. But, you know, if that will happen, then eventually it would, you know, they would try to get it to spread in South America as well. And, you know, with South America, if you get Brazil, then it's pretty much, you know. Well, and money biggest... money is already global. Business is already global. Um, business, yeah, and, business and technology are moving way faster than governments. Yeah. 
So well, that's what that's part of uh, Estonia's project is to get like their government and everything else uh, elect everything you know in either smart technology or in the cloud to get everything accessible and everything you know you can you can become a, a citizen of Estonia right now. Well, they have like what they call global citizenship, which is just basically an e-citizenship, as they like to call it. Hmm. But, but. You know, I haven't heard anything about this Estonia stuff. I'm gonna have to look into that. Really? Yeah. Uh, what's even scarier is that uh, out in Saudi Arabia, they're trying to build what there's going to be dubbed the first smart city, where everything is smart, like everything's online. Uh. Uh, they're building it, and they're hoping to have it up and running by 2030. Which is right in line with the UN Agenda 2030. Yeah, which is just another name for Agenda 21, where they just want to get everybody living in these uh, Blade Runner-esque zones. Mm -hmm. like you, can, you can already see it happening in Portland. Like, uh, they have, like, that... Uh, my friend works for Metro. She tells me all the time about the green zones and how they're trying to build. Like they're, trying to, uh, they're trying to get buildings, you know, commercial properties in one area and parks and stuff like that in another area. They're really working, focusing on trying to get that kind of shit done. And part of that is like running people off, like gentrification and kind of shit like that. That's kind of uh, part of the. Well, that's. that's it's fucking coming, man. Like, uh, um, fucking privatized prisons. Like, eventually, you know, part of a Gen 21 is you know, I have, like, basically, a, uh, you know, they used to joke all the time, uh, George Carlin used to joke about, uh, all the time about, uh, making Texas the prison state. Just to put a big fucking fest around Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Like, no, I do think that eventually that's what we just might with the agenda 21's like zoning shit that you might have. Like, you, this is a fucking prison state. You know, uh, back when we were just colonies, Georgia and South Carolina were uh, penal colonies. Like, mm -hmm. that's where a lot of fucking English prisoners got sent to. When they're, uh, but like, uh, well, you have commercialized prisons that are being fucking publicly traded on the stock market. Like, if you're trading, you know, if you're going to have a private a commercial prison, you got to have a product, right, to sell to stockholders. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's true. It's absolutely true. And, and you know, we live in a, we live in a period of history where humanity is the product. You yeah. know, the biggest companies in the world are just selling data. Oh yeah, like Facebook. Facebook share was trading shares through how many uh, was selling shares based off of you know the share prices going up by how many users you know. Mm -hmm. Like, you mean just by where how how come I can't get any of that money? You know, if if I, you can publicly trade and sell me. Well, why the fuck can I buy in and fucking make a profit off of you like you're doing to me? Wouldn't it be some wild dystopian shit if you could go to, like, if Facebook offered a program where, like, if you wanted to buy a house or something, you could go to Facebook and, and get a loan based on your data value? Like, as using your data value as equity? And then if yes. you could if you couldn't pay it, like I don't know, Facebook would put you in some kind of internment camp or something. Well China's got that <laughs> social equity thing that they're doing now where like if you're an asshole on Facebook, you can't ride the subway, you can't fly on an airplane and shit like that. Yeah, you can't rent a car. Yeah, that's bullshit. Being an asshole is not a crime. <laughs> I'm I I would not last at all in China. Like if I let if they like let me be a citizen and you know uh, let me in the country, I'm pretty sure that within a week I wouldn't be allowed to drive. I wouldn't be allowed to leave the house. <laughs> no, you ass. Like nah, man. Just, we'll just send you food, okay? You get back <laughs> under that bridge. 
You stay the fuck inside your house, you fucking asshole. You made 13 people cry. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> I just, I, that's ridiculous, man. What, I, we're getting, like, with, uh, in, like, in Britain, I have a friend who lives in, uh, he he lives uh, in a uh, fucking Liverpool. And he like he knows people that have been arrested, but there's a fucking a uh, mean Facebook post in England, man. Is that oh, fucking... is that that dude that we played Halo with that one time? Yeah. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Peter was that his name? Yeah. Yeah, he was a but, nice guy. Those dudes have been fucking Bobby's knocking on your door. Hey, well, you want, did you make this post? Yeah, fuck, I did. She is a cunt. <laughs> Come with us, please. What well, the fuck? You know, that's a thing that Americans uh, don't understand. Americans fail to understand that hate speech is illegal in most places. Like, I'm I'm born in Canada, and my sister and my grandparents live in Canada. In Canada, you cannot say racist shit. You will go to jail. I, I, I'm against that, just because why can't I hate you with speech? You know? <laughs> As long as I'm not hitting you with my fists or shooting you or getting other people to do shit like that, why can't I just call you a cocksucker? Why? Well, I don't think that we should have laws uh, that legislate speech, uh, but I do think that we need social... I don't know what to call it. We need programs or... or, or I, I, I don't know. We need something that helps people understand that you really don't need hate speech. Like, legitimate so, hate speech. And I'm not talking about being an asshole. That's a different thing. Yeah, but they, they correlate the two being the same because nobody... When the context die, you know, when did the context of a conversation... Like, like, the way we talk when we're playing games, like, you would think that we hated each other. But it's... <laughs> It's just, but like, yeah. If, talk, if people, a lot, of guy friends, a lot of my guy friends, it's just guys talking shit. We talk shit. If, you know, Dude, it's not. If anybody not, read our fucking Facebook Messenger like thread, they would be like, "What the fuck is wrong with these guys?" Yeah, like, but like none. Of, if you just read it, yeah, it sounds horrible. But it, again, it's taken out of context. Right. You know, so like. <laughs> And we're we're of an age. I think it's important to to say that at our age, this is how men talk to each other. And we're not talking about locker room talk, like grab them by the pussy kind of shit. That's not what we mean. What we mean is we are fucking downright mean to each other, like very <laughs> fucking mean to each other. And I mean, there have been times where I'm having a rough day, and I go to talk to you, and you say some shit to me, and it's just like, fuck, man. I don't know if I can take this today. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't know if I have it in me to fucking not break. But that's the thing, and that's love, right? That's love between guys our age, because we live in a rough world where uh, the, everyone is trying to break us down, you know? Um, the humans in general, not just men, but just humans in general, the world is really fucking hard right now. Um and we we are being told that we have to be fucking nice to each other all the time, and that's kind of fucking stupid. It's counterproductive. No, this is going. Some days, I when I go to the work, I'm like, you know, I yeah, I'm clocking in, but I'm not here to work, motherfucker. <laughs> you know, what? you know, <laughs> I, I'm just not in the mood. I don't want to deal with people. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. I'm just here. Like I'm physically I'm here, here, but. Eight hours. Yeah. Kiss my ass. I don't care. You know, I'm not. I don't want to hear your piddly ass shit. I don't care. And your job oh, is actually pretty stuff. cool. We're not going to talk about what it is exactly, but it's a cool job. Like, it, even for you, right, where moments, but, oh fuck, man, dealing with people is a motherfucker. Yeah, people are be nice to it. <laughs> people are so <laughs> fucking selfish. Like, what's the deal with that? What? When did it become a world where the only thing that matters is, like, your feelings? Like, fuck your feelings. I don't give a shit about your feelings. Like, that's not a relevant thing. I, like, feelings aren't facts. Well, I feel that, I feel like you did, I don't give a fuck how you felt about what I did. I did what I thought was in the best interest of what was happening at that particular time. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, 
I wasn't doing that to be a personal affront to you. Fucking calm down. Stop taking everything fucking personal. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I, I'll I'll apologize to people when I hurt their feelings, because um, I don't want to hurt people's feelings. I I don't think anyone does. Uh, well, I mean, I some people do, it. but it depends. I don't always apologize because I don't. If I say something, and you get offended. It's not, you know, I can explain something to you, but I can't understand it for you. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just because you took it in a completely different context than what I was speaking of, mm-hmm. I'm not going to be responsible for your, you know, you being a dumbass or you being overly emotional about something. That's an no, interesting no. way to put it. I can explain something to you, but I can't understand it for you. That's that's really, like, that's pretty, uh, that's deep. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's 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 from dealing with morons from behind a register and dealing with uh, um, people in the healthcare and the family members. Like you, know, you can tell them what's going on, but they're gonna have their own ideas. Like, look, that's not what's going on. Here's what's actually going on. And at that point. Once you've explained everything that's going on, they're either going to accept it or they're going to go on with their own fucking crazy thinking, which 99 out of fucking 100 times is going to happen any fucking way. But, you know, this is where I came up with it. I can explain it to you if I can't understand it for you. I, you know, and this... you kind of on the topic of um, <clears throat> just society and the way it is now, my son... He's a really he's a he's a really sensitive kid, and um, he gets bullied at school, and he'll he'll come home and he'll be like, uh, you know, hey Brad, I, I, this kid is, you know, yada yada, etc. And um, you know, your instinct as a as a parent is to try to protect your child, but then I'm like, fuck, you're 13. In five years, you're gonna be expected to stand on your own two feet. So I I kind of have to strike this balance between um kind of being encouraging and and kind to him because he's a human and he has feelings but also um kind of being like bro i that's not gonna stop this is never gonna stop and it's gonna get worse when you grow up and you're and you're an adult it'll be way worse way way worse um so you guys picked up a lot going through school and shit and like that's why I'm such a fucking smart ass. That's why I talk so much shit. Because a lot of times the only thing when people are beating the fuck out of me, the only thing I had was my fucking mouth and fucking shit I could talk. I'm like, all right, yeah, you might beat me up. I'm gonna wound your inner fucking child, bitch. What do you think? <laughs> beat me up, but I'm. A... <laughs> oh God. <laughs> you know. You... The bruise under my eye will go away, but the shit I said about your mom, that's going to stick with you to the day you die, motherfucker. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, I got I got bullied when I was a kid. I don't know about you, but uh, I certainly did. Yeah, I mean, but, up, to dude, point, I, up to a point. Up to a point. About ninth grade, tough, it stopped. Man. But. It made me mainly tough. That's, it made, I was like, you know what? Either I'm going to be sit there and let these people verbally abuse me and fuck me up, you know? Emotionally, or I'm gonna fucking learn to twist it back and aim, turn the gun on them. So that's that's why I got really good at dealing with hecklers and shit like that was because I used to get, I used to have to move around a lot and was the new kid often a lot of times. And like, you know, being a new kid, people gonna fucking make fun of you, talk shit to you and stuff. And like, you can either sit there and cry in the corner of the new classroom and everybody think you're a bitch. And you're like, well, fuck you, mother. You know, go back. Yeah, and, oh, yeah, yeah. I'll tap back on now. That's you know. But do you that's... think? Do you think that? Um, do you think that we need to be easier on kids? Do you, uh, as parents, like I know that you don't have any kids, but um, uh, I do think that man, goddamn, some people they just try to protect the fuck out of their kid. I'm like, yeah. You know how fucked up it is out there. Like, you know that <laughs> it's fucked up shit. You can't keep them from that shit forever. Mm-hmm. And when that happens, they're going to be completely fucking unprepared on how to fucking handle this situation. And what good is 
all that fucking protecting done. You've done mm-hmm. nothing. You've not equipped them with how to deal with you know. Like, the thing that frustrates me about people in general is that I think I'm a logical person and dealing with people. You can't, not everybody's going to th- look, be rational. Not everybody's going to look at things analytically, you know. Some, you know, can't a motherfucker just be crazy sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For sure. For sure. You can't. You can't I struggle you can't with rationalize it. Crazy, man, you can't rationalize crazy. You I fucking, I really struggle with um, finding the balance between being supportive and loving and and kind, and and being a better no, I, being a better dad than I had. You know, because my dad was really fucking hard, uh, and I love no, him I'm and not, I respect him. You're like a shitty parent, but and I do understand. And I do appreciate how fucking difficult of a job it is. Mm-hmm. But, like, you can't, you know, taking the bullet for fuck taking the bullet for them, teach them how to fucking fire back. Teach them to fucking pick up the gun and fire back, you know? You gotta fucking defend yourself, man. You know what I noticed I in the last, like, year? Since he turned 13, I noticed, I, well, first of all, I put him in jiu-jitsu. Um, and that discipline really carried over. In a lot of ways, um, prior to going into jiu-jitsu, he had crappy grades. He like did very badly in school. And the last semester, he brought me his report card from school before he went for summer vacation, and he only got a D in one class. His grade point average was almost three point five. Um, nice. Yeah, I was really impressed with it um, and really proud of him. Um, so I put him in jiu-jitsu, and then I started giving him dangerous tools <laughs> and i know that sounds crazy but like i i taught him how to i, I taught him how to use uh the hedge clippers um to take care of like the 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 blackberry bushes in the backyard um i taught him how to use oh that's fucking gardening that's well i mean it's, it's <laughs> you gotta keep in mind as a parent as a parent if i hand my child a, who is historically very irresponsible I hand him a giant fucking pair of scissors. It's terrifying. Um, I'm like, I don't know, fucking know what this kid's going to do with these. I, like, he could do crazy shit. Um, but he doesn't. And he goes out and he does what he's told or asked to do. And what I found is his sense of self-respect and his sense of responsibility and, and kind of accountability has increased significantly since I started giving him more serious responsibility. Um, well, yeah, you gonna, how are you? How are you or him? How's he gonna know if he can trust himself in a situation if he's not right. really fucking? You know? And I gave him a pocket knife. Um, and uh, he's been surprisingly responsible with it. Not surprisingly, but just you know, sometimes you give your kid a, the a BB gun or you know a pocket knife or whatever. Well, I, I, don't uh, think, I think you're the of all my friends. I think you're the only. Uh, uh, dad, I know that's giving his son a pocket knife. Like, really? Uh, nobody does that anymore. Like, really? I remember my, my first. I remember my first fucking. I mean, my first knife. I, my dad gave me for Christmas. I was like eight or nine. But like, I remember that being a milestone for dudes. Like, yeah. Like, I, yeah. No, nobody does that shit no more. That's weird. <laughs> like, I didn't know that nobody did that anymore. That's really fucking weird. I, I gave it to him. I went to Seattle. Um. Two or three years I, ago? I have been living in Portland for a while. So I'm oh. sure out here in Pineville it happens like as soon as they can walk. Here you go, kid. Here's a fucking knife. Try not to stab your sister. Here's a Colt 1911, a machete, and some tobacco. <laughs> no, I uh, two or three years ago I went to Seattle for Hemp Fest for some business when I was doing the oil thing. And uh, yeah. I went to the Space Needle, and they had this really cool um, Swiss Army knife that has, like, the Space Needle etched on it, and it says number one son. Um, and I saw that, and I was like, oh, that's fucking perfect. What a perfect thing for me to bring back, you know, f- for the boy. And uh, he has never lost that knife. He still has it. And How long did it take for him to cut himself? He hasn't. He's never cut himself with it. I cut myself like three hours after getting my first. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't. I, I think it's just. 
get it. I think it's just dumb luck that he hasn't cut himself with it, but... Um... No, because, like, I saw my dad run his thumb over a knife blade before to see how sharp it is. I didn't realize that you didn't need to fucking put a lot of pressure. I didn't <laughs> yeah. have that part. I fucking figured it out really goddamn <laughs> No, shortly before I uh, sent him off to uh, to be with his dad for the summer, um, I picked him up from jiu-jitsu, and uh, we're riding back in the truck, and he's uh, he got, he's got this fucking stick. And he's got his knife out, and he's whittling, he's sharpening the tip of the stick. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm making a spear. And I was like, what are you making a spear for? And he's like, so I can go hunting. Okay, one of my friends, like, they recently their went to outdoor school or some shit. And, like, I, don't, I asked them when they came back, you know, hey, did you guys learn to whittle or you learn it? They didn't teach them anything to do with a fucking knife. Now, you know what they learn? How to fucking address people through pronouns and shit. Oh, what's your pronouns? You see the kid outside in the fucking wilderness and you to learn fucking pronouns, motherfucker, really? <laughs> I, um, he went to outdoor school this year and they taught him archery. He, he came well, back and told me that they learned archery. I was like, oh, cool. Archery's neat. That, that's the kind of shit they should be teaching. The fucking, how to enter, how to do... Social introductions, fucking really, motherfucker. <laughs> well, that stuff, like I, th I just think that that stuff's not that important to teach a kid at school. Stuff like that you should learn at home. That's not, that's not school stuff. Like, I think it's important to teach your kid how to be polite, how to address people, how to introduce themselves to people, how to shake hands, all that stuff. But I just don't think they should teach that at school. Your your mom or dad should teach you that, you know, or your uncle or. You know, your your neighbor, you know, because I grew up, you know, um, raised by a village. So well, um, I don't I don't know. I don't have children. But as a single, uh, a single cis male, as they like to say, uh, just by what I read and from what I see at school, man, it seems like fucking the state tells the kids everything they need to know. Like, parents don't do shit anymore. They just they just make them and they feed them occasionally, every once in a while, and then make sure that they go to indoctrination class. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Is is public schools are really just indoctrination centers? Well, I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't know. Is that is that is that's what going, is that what's really going on? Because like. Just from what I read and see on, you know, the news and shit, I would say that parents aren't really doing a whole lot at home anymore. Well, I think that a lot of millennial parents are not doing as much as they should be doing. And I'm not here to judge other people um, and how they raise their kids, but I think that in a world surrounded by screens and distractions and there's a lot of ways... For people to put their kid on autopilot now that didn't exist in the 80s right yeah no man my i got a friend and she just gave her two-year-old he's gonna be three here in a couple of days but uh started giving him this tablet and that kid he used to uh, want me to play with him want to uh, shoot baskets he has this little like uh play school hoop now that that kid's got that tablet, he don't pay two shits to pass it. <laughs> His face is in that fucking glowing tablet. Yeah. Like, yeah, screens, a... screens are like crack cocaine for children. They really oh, are. Man. It's amazing, though. Like, I don't remember, but like... I don't know. I, like, I, I had a Game Boy, like, the, I remember, I was like, in, what grade was I in when those first came out? Oh, fuck, Game that, Boys? That came out, yeah, the first Game Boy. That was, what, 89, 88? Yeah. yeah. 89, 90? Something like that. Yeah. Like, I, I, I had my face in that motherfucker all the time, like, but, like, when I was living in Germany, like, we do a lot of long road trips, because, like, Almost every weekend, my dad would take us someplace. Because, like, in Germany, man, fucking a two- or three-hour car ride, you're in a completely different fucking country. So why yeah. not make the most? 
So, like, a lot of times, riding in the fucking back of the car, I would have had a fucking Game Boy on, and, like, mm-hmm. I had, I bought, like, several of those fucking light boy contraptions, shit that would go on. Oh, the yeah, board. yeah, the little, the little flashlights that would hang over the top of it. The only shit one like that I had any luck with was, like, the NES, the Nintendo one that, like, was this fucking, it looked like a big, giant magnifying glass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I remember that. that one, yeah. That was the one that I, the only one I ever had that worked worth a fuck. Yeah, did but, you did you have a Game Gear? Yeah, I had a Game Gear, and here's the thing oh, about but, screens for us when we were kids. Yeah, I had um, a Game Gear that had no batteries. Cause right, that big, batteries right? were like fifty dollars or whatever. I don't <laughs> know how much batteries were, but I know that my mom fucking hated buying them. Um, and a Game yeah, Gear would go I, for like I, five minutes. Six double A's, and yeah. they were great. Like, you, whatever cartridge you plugged in and you turn it on, you push start, and you had like three seconds before the screen died. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Unless you had one of the fucking adapters, man. Yeah, I never Which did. One? I never had one of those adapters. I, I, I had I the car one, and I had the uh, AC outlet one. You had the car one? Yeah. You son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. You had way cooler shit than me. <laughs> well, I, didn't, I didn't have any brothers or sisters, man, so... But, like, shit like that... My dad was really big into computers and shit like that. Like, oh, was he? We had, yeah, like, I remember, like, my dad was super stoked when he bought the first fucking Sound Blaster. Uh, like I remember when uh, he we he bought that we fucking put it in and like it came Wing Commander and oh my god yeah, fucking sound that wasn't like the fucking internal PC speaker bullshit to hear the orchestra mm. orchestra music and fucking Wing Commander was an awesome game visually but like fuck having the sound blaster the sounds with the music and the sound effects really fucking turned that game. Into a fucking experience for me when I was little, man. Yeah. But yeah, fucking computers and shit like that, <clears> my dad was really into. And so, like, if I want, like, the, for, like, Game Gear and shit like that, like, it was always a thing that I'd have to work for by half the money. Like, if I, like, say if something was $200 for something like that, my dad would, all right, look, you hit the $100 mark, I'll kick in the other 100 Oh, that's so that cool. Was, I, yeah. I think that was how I got the Game Gear. The Game Boy was, I think, uh, game. The Game Boy was another thing like that. Like I fucking see. I we were my- we were really poor, um, and I was raised by a single mom for most of my childhood. Um, so her deal was, uh, I my birthday's in June, so it would be two big presents a year. It'd be birthday and Christmas, and that's when I had the opportunity to ask for something like a Super Nintendo or a Game Boy. Yeah. Um, and that's how I ended up getting that stuff. Um, is like every six months or so, I would have my chance to make my choice, right? Um, and I ended up. And console generations were a lot longer back then too, which was nice. Yeah. Oh man, fuck. Uh, Genesis came out in '89, and they stopped making. The last, the last Sega, sir, you know, uh, Sega Seal approval game in what, like 2000? That's uh, no, it was uh, 90, it was like 96. No, it was. I think Man 99 was the last man they made for the fucking Genesis. So I, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was like an EA game was like the last fucking uh, official. Uh, Genesis game. But, like, yeah, that was, like, almost 2000, I think. Yeah, it went for a pretty long time. I know, because I know I had, um, uh, the first business I ever started was a video game rental service. Really? Yeah. Yeah, when I was, uh, nine, ten years old, I, um, I had collected all these games. Um, so. I had all of the consoles except for like the obvious expensive shit like the Neo Geo and my mom was not going to get me. That. I never had a Neo no, Geo. Either, I didn't even know anyone who had a Neo Geo. And I I don't I, 
The only time I forgot to play them was the uh, MVS versions that were in, uh, you know, like arcades and shit. Yeah, yeah. And I've I've played in Neo Geo as an adult. Um, I know people who own them now as grown-ups who are collectors. In Knoxville, Tennessee, they had at West Town Mall. It was called West Town Mall now, but I don't – back then, I, I think they renamed them all to something else now, but uh, – the arcade there had a Neo Geo with uh, World Heroes 2, and it was on this big screen, this like big, this huge big screen, and like it wasn't in, it wasn't in your classic arcade cabinet. Like this TV looked like it was a big screen TV for the monitor, and then the two joysticks were set up like three, three or four, three feet away from the screen, and like it was just a really oh, different. Oh yeah, setup. like a like really. on a sort of like a pedestal. Like, yeah. like, separate from the screen. It wasn't, like, an all-in-one yeah. cabinet. Yeah, I remember those. Yeah, yeah, yeah that thing was fucking <laughs> awesome. It, was, it looked like the shit that they use now for the uh, Street Fighter tournaments and shit. But, yeah. Like, that was yeah. an arcade. Like, that was, that was the only time I ever saw Neo Geo kind of shit. And, like, like I remember reading, like, EGM, like, Talk Games Monthly and, uh, other other video game magazines at the time, back when they had those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I always remember seeing the ads in the, those uh, for Neo Geo. And, like, fuck, I always wanted one of those. But then, Dude, like, do you know see, what the see those, like, price list? Like, remember those ads in the video game magazines where, uh, you know, oh, fucking order from us and we'll ship it to you. They had like the price of games and shit, like Sega. Genesis and Super Nintendo cartridges were like forty bucks, and you look at the Neo Geo shit, and like Samurai Show, that was a hundred and fifty fucking dollar cartridge. Yeah, and the cartridges were the size of like fucking VHS tapes. Yeah, like I, I've I've never had a Neo Geo, but I've always wanted to buy one just just to, and like Samurai Showdown, one of the Samurai Showdowns. I even now, uh, even now as a game collector, uh, Neo Geos are it's too rich for my blood, bro. I can't get into that hobby. It's too expensive. How much are the cartridges going for now? You know what? I don't know. Let's look. I have the what, how much are the how much are the, uh, how much are the G- Neo Geo cartridges selling for now? Let me look. eBay. eBay. What? No, not DaVinci Resolve. God damn it. Uh, da, 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 eBay. Fucking. Da, 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 da. Oh. Just one if they're still in the hundred dollar market. Yeah, I, I think that that that's not a reasonable assumption to make. That's. I don't know. I think it'd be cool to have uh. One well, of those King of it. Fighter ninety nine, um, yeah. U.S. version bundle is eighteen hundred dollars. Damn. <laughs> Um, no. <laughs> real bite, real bout. Fatal Fury. Goru Den Densetsu is going for ninety five or best offer. There's ten people That's watching it. Samurai Spirits in good condition. Looks like it comes with the box and everything. It's complete. Is going for seventy five uh, or best offer. Samurai Samurai Spirits three one seventy two. Um. Samurai they Showdown for the third one. Mm-hmm. Third one was the what uh was not a, was not a well received game. Your uh your game uh Samurai Showdown. Do you want to know how much yeah. that's going for? Buy it now. Yeah, either one or two. Four buy, or five are great too. Buy it now. This one is Samurai Showdown Four. Is buy it now for three fifty. Damn. With fourteen dollars and thirty-five cents shipping, so three sixty-four thirty-five. Damn. And it has a little link under it. it says one new and refurbished from two twenty-five. So it looks like the bottom dollar is about two twenty-five on that. Metal, yeah. Metal Slug is going for one seventy-eight fifty. Yeah, Metal Slug shit's gonna be expensive. No, Metal Slug is such a great game, dude. It's such a great game. Uh, Fatal Fury 3, $760. Buy it now. 25 people watching it. 
Yeah, I'm not going. Dude, I, I'm not, I'm a bad collector because like I only buy shit I'm gonna play. <laughs> I either buy shit I'm gonna play or buy shit that I'm just like attracted to because I didn't have it as a kid. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's the only reason why I bought the NES. Was, uh, my mom would never let me buy a Nintendo. Yeah, I had a Commodore 64. <clears throat> like, I've, I've had a Commodore 64, a computer, to play games on since I was, like, three. Mm-hmm. And so, like, it, it's a weird thing. It, I still get my mom's shit about it. So, like, I get the uh, NES Mini and uh, get to play more than 30 games that <laughs> came loaded on it. Like, yeah. It's just nice to have that controller and like finally have the the nest. The, but it's yeah. I, I really just, love the controllers. They really. Oh my yeah. cat! My cat is here. Hold on. I'm gonna show everyone the kitty boy. I love this cat so much. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I'm gonna hang out with the cat for a while. But yeah, the controllers that came out with the the NES Classic and the SNES Classic were pretty much awesome. They they they're, feel they're, they're exactly the same. Old, yeah, they're the exactly the same. Same weight, same mm-hmm. heft, still like. Uh, and dude, I don't know if they're as indestructible as the old ones were, but when I was a kid, I would throw that fucking controller against the wall. Really? Oh yeah, You're a controller dude. thrower. Oh, well, I'm not now, but when I was, like, eight. I, I was never been that way, man, because, like, you know, we were poor, like, especially living overseas, like, if the PX didn't have it, you had to wait till the next fucking shipment, and they don't know when they're getting it. This, you know, this is pre-tracking and ordering online days. Mm-hmm. Like, so, like, you don't, you, and they might not have another fucking controller if you're, Punk ass decides to throw that motherfucker across the floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did I grew up treasuring those motherfuckers. I and mean, this was back before they were like sixty sixty to fuck a hundred dollars like they are now. Do you remember uh, I, um do you remember the introduction of the six button Genesis controller? Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, no. I came uh it was uh for Street Fighter cha- special champion edition. And then the uh, Streets of Rage 2, I think, I advertised that they it, they could use it or that they had options to use it on their game. Are you yeah, going to try to pick up the uh, the Genesis Mini Classic thing that they're coming out this year? Uh, I, it depends on how well how well it turns out. Like I have to see some reviews on it and shit. If it's anything like that at games one, fuck no. No, that shit's trash, bro. That at game I shit think... is trash for real. Yeah. Like, and I was disappointed. I, that made me sad because I really would love like a, a Genesis version of that. And like the at games one are one of them that I seen. Like they had a slot to where you could plug cartridges into it, so like you could start, you know be a great way to start collecting actual Genesis cartridges again. Dude, if uh, you're going to go that yeah. route, the way to go is the fucking Retron 5. Really? Yeah. Because the Retron 5 does um, HDMI, and, and it's a ROM dumper, so um, you can play ROMs off an SD card. It is compatible yeah. with, like, EverDrives and shit like that. Um, they're kind of spendy, and, and they tend to hold their value. So it's like 150 bucks, so it's it's a little spendy, um, but they they the upsampling is great, um, the picture quality is awesome, it's hands down the cheapest and best not best overall, but for you know value wise the best way to get um, classic consoles onto an HD TV. If you want to play cartridges. <laughs> You know, that many if they came out with it. I'm sure it's got enough space on the hard drive that you could hack it and get the other ROMs onto it. <laughs> and that that appeals to me. Yeah. Like I'm more play, I'm more into playing the games instead of just oh look look at them on my shelf. I I really like playing them. Yeah, like, I uh, um I I I why. really love the Genesis. It's one of my favorite consoles. Dude, it was ah. Uh, the the game that made me buy a Genesis was I went and, uh, went over to my friend Fred's house. This I was that was like what 
third grade, fourth grade, some shit. Or no, it's like fifth grade. Yeah, it's fifth grade. One of the Fred's house to play fucker Vanzer Snowy. Like I, after playing it there, man, the soundtrack was awesome. Fucking the graphics were just outstanding. I was fucking hooked. I, I ended up getting my first Genesis. Uh, I made a deal with the old man if I got all A's and B. At the end of the year, that he'd buy me a Genesis. I, I fucking, I had uh, uh, two a, two A's and like three B's. Nice, <laughs> nice. I got my. Uh... <clears throat> you want to know what's uh, fucked up? You want to know something Snow- fucking Revenge crazy? Snow- was the first game that I got. I never owned Sonic the Hedgehog until I was an adult. Isn't that weird? I, bought, I got the first. My, uh, I got the Genesis that had the volume control with the headset jack. Yep, that's the, the one know, I the have. Generation. Mm-hmm. And uh, the packing game was Altered Beast. And I loved Altered Beast. Altered I don't Beast know why is I... fucking awesome, dude. I still yeah, love I, to play I, that I, game. It's one of my favorite arcade games to this day. It's still one of my favorite arcade games. I love the Genesis version. I have the I Genesis why, uh, collection for the Switch. Yeah, and I don't know why it gets so much shit. I don't understand. It's a fun fucking game. It's really good. It's really good, and, and it looks really player. good. It was one of the rare two-player games. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I just I love the Genesis, man. Like I was a sports guy, so like Madden and shit was always better on the Genesis than the Super NES. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Sports games were definitely the uh, bulk. Of the Genesis library. And, and also, like, I, fighting games, I think, w- were better on the Genesis. Uh, like Mortal Kombat specifically. Yeah. I, li- I like the Genesis six-button controller a lot better than a NES. Everybody, like, yeah, I love the shoulder pad buttons. I would go with uh, the Sega Saturn, the best one of the best controllers ever. It's like it was basically the six button Sega six button controller, but it also had those two uh, shoulder buttons on the top, mm-hmm. along with the six buttons. But uh, fucking, I I always liked the Genesis the D pad on there. It's like it had the diagonals. I'm like, you're if you're a fucking dragon puncher like me, man, fucking that helped. Yeah. <laughs> that... Yeah, I agree. Actually, that's one of the reasons why I know uh, I, recently you picked up an Elite controller for the Xbox One. Yeah. Because uh, I was <laughs> telling you, like, every time we spoke how fucking awesome it was. And one of the things I love the most about that is I love fighting games. Um, and that circular d yeah. is fucking awesome for Street Fighter, dude. It's really great. Yeah, I don't... I don't... I like the idea. I don't like the way that they did it. Like, I wish they would have had, like, uh, like the Sega Genesis 6 back button controller kind of uh, D-pad thing. Like, I, that weird diamond shit, it, I don't like that. I you like don't? the idea of it, but I don't like, you no, know, I just, I'd rather have, like, the, like, you know, the two crosses and then, like, something in the middle. Like, I, I just don't, I don't know. I, I don't I just have to get used to it, maybe. But like right now, I'm I really don't like it. <laughs> but it is better than just the regular cross on that. Speaking of fighting games, have you played uh, Mortal Kombat 11 yet? No, uh, I haven't played it yet. Um, um, unless it's a free games for gold thing, I probably won't ever. Like I read about a lot of the social justice bullshit crammed into the game, and like I. The only voice I have anymore is with my dollars, and so shit that goes overboard with the social justice bullshit, I'll pass. I won't buy it. Did you play uh, 10? You have 10, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I had 10 on the uh, my PlayStation. I had the 10 XL, and I, I don't know. I didn't like it. I, it's not. It, it wasn't that it didn't handle. The controls were fine. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the new combat system. <clears throat> but, uh, mostly I just, I like the old, like, I think Mortal Kombat peaked at two. 
<laughs> but I do. I think. I think Mortal Kombat beat that too. I play all the other games. Like I, t- three is fun. Ultimate three is fun. Uh, four was meh. Four is one of really. And like all the like the nineteen or well, however many sequels that were only on the PS2. I didn't play hardly any of those. Yeah. And so I gave. Uh, the last one I really enjoyed was this, the Mortal Kombat reboot on the Xbox and shit. Oh, yeah, I have that for the 360. It's fucking great. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah, because it brought back Barack as a badass, and I like that. Yeah. Uh, that's what, but, that, but to me, again, that was just uh, uh, like a giving one and two a HD you know, injection, and that was perfect. And then they went to this weird fucking injustice combat system, and I haven't liked it since. Do you um do you still have that Mortal Kombat for the 360? Uh, I don't. I I can't find it. I used to have it on disc. But I can't find it now. Damn, I was gonna say, dude, we need to play. So that if I ever see in the wild, I'll probably scoop that up, or unless they make it, sell it on the Xbox Store. Did I tell you that I put in um, Halo Reach, and uh, people are still playing Halo Reach? On yeah, Xbox Live? I have. Yeah, I have uh, the digital copy I can download onto the uh, onto my Xbox. I was playing it a couple months ago. I got a couple games, and like, I remember playing that shit all the time. And like, I now when I play, I'm like, how the fuck did I ever play this? Because I was horrible. <laughs> Dude, horrible. I was too. I put it in, and um, I put it in because I, I wanted to play the campaign again. Um, but I was See, like... I didn't really start playing Halo multiplayer till like, 3. Like, I know a lot of people, like, love 1 and 2. I, when I play Halo 1 or 2 multiplayer, I fucking hate it. Yeah. It's like, when you guys are playing that, I had already moved on to, like, Counter-Strike, Unreal Tournament. Like, I grew up playing Doom and uh, Wolfenstein 3D, so, like, that kind of multiplayer is pretty much what Halo is, and so, like, I had already outgrown that, so, like, I, I that ruined that ruined me for Halo till like, 3. 3, I played a lot online. I never finished the campaign to Halo 4, but I played the fuck out of it, out of it on multiplayer. Never did the campaigns. What was, your, uh, what was your uh? What was your screen name in Halo Three? Like during that period of time? Uh, same thing as it is now. Is it? Um, because I wonder. You know, it's, the odds of it are astronomical. But I played a lot of Halo Three. Um, so like, there's a chance that we played each other. Maybe. I didn't have a headset back then. I didn't start. I can't remember when I bought my first Turtle Beaches, but... What do you mean you didn't have a headset? The fucking game came with one. (laughs) It was like that shitty plastic fucking thing that broke after... Well, yeah, but, I mean, it was... It it worked. I used that for years. The, like... I didn't like it. It bugged me. Like, that, uh... The side, the part, the side that didn't have the uh, headphone or the earphone on it, mm-hmm. that, and it had that little plastic fucking piece. Yeah, yeah. It would hit my fucking head, so I wouldn't wear the mm. motherfuckers. Never used the fucking mic. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't use the fucking mic on my Xbox till like the last two years. I I played the 360. The uh... like I bought a headset. <clears throat> I bought a headset for fucking uh, Call of Duty Ghosts. Just so I could use that fucking... They had a perk that was designed basically for headsets that allowed you to hear people's fucking footsteps. Oh, weird. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> I That's bought cool. a headset for fucking Call of Duty. Fucking $150 fucking, dollar fucking <laughs> turtle pieces. I still have those fucking turtle pieces. <laughs> I fucking... Uh, I remember when Halo 3 came out... Um, the the Halo Three Edition Xbox Three Sixty I had that the yeah, green, that the green and gold blue the translucent blue no, one no 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 the green and gold one oh uh, I uh, love the blue one, man the translucent fucking... blue one was for Halo Four I think yeah that thing was fucking beautiful man 
My friend had one, has one in the fucking box, and like every time he starts talking about selling it, I'm like, I think about fucking. What, I mean, uh, what's he talk about getting for it though? What's he talk? What's he ask for it when he starts talking about selling it? Uh, he says he can probably get five for it, and I'm like, ah, five? Fuck. Yeah. Is it sealed? Yeah. Oh. Sealed in box. Okay. All right, because like complete in box, I wouldn't pay more than two fifty, two two fifty. But sealed, that's a whole nother conversation. Um, well, it's just stupid. I don't know why sealed means it's more. All it means is it has factory air. It's never been run. You don't know if the fucking thing even works. Well, you won't, you're not going to ever know if it works because if you buy it now for five hundred sealed, you're a fucking moron if you open it, right? Like, why would you do that? That you you might as well just go on eBay and get a used one if you're gonna open it, right? I guess I'm. Not, I mean, I'm I'm not I'm a different kind of collector, man. Like, I'm not. If I could ever get like a Schnobie arcade cart cabinet, like original, like I would play it. <laughs> I wouldn't fucking play, start it up. Fucking put set the dip set switches to free fucking play, and I would play the motherfucker. Like I wouldn't. I don't see the point, especially with shit like games. Like, to me, the value is in playing it. It's not, you know, oh, look at, you know, I will not give up my most prized possession. <laughs> you know, I buy, I buy stuff. So the way that I collect is I, first of all, I agree with you completely. Um, but also I do buy sealed shit if I can get a good price and I know I'll make a profit. But I don't buy it because I want to collect it. I buy it so that I can buy more games. It's an investment that I know will buy more games. Yes, you're you're looking to flip it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I don't. I I would never hold a sealed item in my collection, um, f forever. That's just that, that that isn't something I would do. There's a few exceptions. Um, if I happen to luck my way into a sealed graded Ocarina of Time. <laughs> right i wouldn't i would hold that because that's dope right uh the guy who are you familiar with video game wizards here in portland the store uh, it's like off of like division and 102nd or 122nd or something it's, no that's cd that game exchange like that's cd game exchange there at 122nd division uh video game yeah. wizards is on foster down by the uh 205 interchange like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in the uh, it's in the little cubby hole with Seven Eleven. Yes, yes, yes. It's moving. <laughs> they they lost the lease on that. But um, uh, the guy who owns that store. <clears throat> Excuse me. I need a drink. Um, the guy who owns that store has a sealed, graded gold cart ocarina of time. Um. <laughs> He'll, he'll probably never sell it, um, but I've heard him tell. He's told me that people have offered him five thousand dollars for that. Oh. Yeah, I don't know what it's going for, like what its actual value is, but you know, value doesn't mean much when you walk into a store and you see it sitting there on the top shelf, and you know it's in his like. Then there's a sign clearly says this stuff is not for sale; it's for display. Um, but uh man it's so cool it's so cool i don't know why but i really want that ocarina of time is one of my favorite games ever made yeah it's like one of two of the 64 games i really enjoy playing what's the other one uh, actually three there's three golden eye oh yeah mm -hmm. ocarina and uh nba hang time because I, I, I never played that one Probably not. It was like a better version of NBA Jam, basically. But like with four players, like you have four fucking three other friends fucking playing with you. That game got really fucking fun. And like I had buddies that like it all, games with on NBA hang time on the sixth floor. It always came down to whichever team had the ball last usually won. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Blood matches on that fucking thing. I loved a NBA I mean, Jam though. I think the 64 is worthless. Um, yeah, I, I kind of feel the same way. Ocarina. So I have I have a 64 now. Um, 
Then I have like five games. I have Ocarina, uh, Majora's Mask, um, Mario 64, and Wave Racer. I hated Mario 64. Yeah, me too. I hate it too. It's awful. It's not a fun game. It's a piece of shit. It's a I... piece of shit. Yeah. Mario 64 is the most overrated motherfucking game, and anybody who tells me that that's on their top whatever list, I'm like, you're a fucking moron. I don't even want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> I fucking hate that game. You know what Mario <laughs> game is not an overrated piece of shit, though? Yeah. Um, We were talking about the Wii U earlier. Uh, New Super Mario World? New Super Mario 3D World for the Wii U. It's fucking awesome. It's really fun. Really, really fun. Graphics look great. The controls look great. Um, is it 2D or is it... It's both. It's both. Um, it's 3D in a way better way than uh, Mario 64 was. Mario 64 3D is fucking stupid. Um, I hated that game because... Dude, it wasn't a Mario game. Like, it just... <sighs> Collecting coins was fucking pointless. Uh, there was, like... I don't know. It just... it re- That game really fucking annoyed me, man. <laughs> like, it felt like you were just wandering around. Here we go. Hot, hot take, unpopular opinion. Super Mario Brothers 2 is a piece of shit. Not, not Super Mario 2, Mar- Super Mario 64 on this N64. That fucking thing, I hated that game, man. Yeah. Like, I remember everybody at school fucking talk about how great it was, and I fucking, I remember I finally ended up renting it or something, and I, it was one of those rentals that I, I honestly thought about going, driving back into town and fucking like, hey man, can I trade this for a different fucking game? Because this is a real piece of shit. <laughs> Do you remember I, the game I, Spy Hunter? I, like Mar- I wanted to call it Mario Wandering. <laughs> I'm like, you're fucking doing that. I'm like, you're fucking lost and there wasn't shit to do. Fucking, yeah. Okay. Anyway, sorry. Dude, do you know um, what I would love to see, but it'll never happen? <laughs> A Highlander video game. I fucking love the Highlander series, dude. I love it so much. Uh, the Jaguar six, the Jaguar uh, sixty four had a a CD CD extension and a cartoon game on it. <laughs> oh, nice! I didn't know that. That's cool. It was that game fucking sucked. I think somebody <laughs> should do a like World of Warcraft style fucking open world MMORPG. But Highlander, and you get to make your own immortal, and everyone else, yeah. everyone else that's a player character is an immortal, and the purpose of the game is to be the last living immortal, and you only get one life. Yeah, that would never work online. It would be so <laughs> fun, though, right? I, I, it wouldn't work. It would be a shit show, but it would be fun. It would, be, it, it would rely so heavily on PvP that, like. Only like the original, the people who got in as soon as the servers went live would have a chance to, you know. Like, I, what, what if would, they did it like on would, PC? What would your, what would your uh, PVE be on that game then? Well, you know, what? what if they did it on PC and they only sold like say they they they're like we're gonna have a million players, no more. Once we sell a million yeah. copies, we're done. Yeah. What game company would turn is going to turn down money? Nobody's going to agree to do that, dumb dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that they would. I'm just saying, imagine if it were true. We're only that... One million dollars, and then after that, nope, nobody's allowed to buy. No, no not one million dollars, but say one mil- one, one million players. players. And w- okay, yeah, so what if the game cost two hundred dollars? And so there was a monthly have, like, subscription. So, so you're getting like, what is that, like $200 million profit? Mm-mm, mm-mm. No, because there has to be an online subscription after the fact. So $200 to buy into the game, and then $20 a month to play. Until... Yeah, but you're going you're gonna to lose half of your subscribers on day one. 
from getting killed. This game lasts like what, maybe a day at the most. What no, game company no. is saying? I think you would have to have a grinding leveling component, and you can't PvP until a certain point, so you get some life out of the game that way. And then I think because of the the nature of the story of Highlander, that would work. Like uh, you've never played Diablo two on the PC with a hardcore character, have you? I never played any PC games except for Unreal Tournament 2004. Well, like, all right, on uh, Diablo 2 on the PC, and, like, all, all Diablos, I think, have this. They have what they have a version of a character you can make called a hardcore character, and you play online with it, but if he dies once, that's it. Mm. Like, you lose all your shit, you lose everything. <clears throat> that motherfucker dead, and you start again at zero with the motherfucker. And, like, they, dude, I have had, like, dudes on... Uh, like level 87, level 93 on a hardcore character on Diablo, just to fucking have a lag death, Ooh. you know, where you still lag spike and all of a sudden fucking That's creatures that, appear. That fucking hurts, yeah. bro. That, that hurts my yeah, heart so just like, hearing that. Yeah, and so you're talking about making a fucking online RPG where you're basically playing a hardcore mode with a lot of other bloodthirsty fucking people on PvP. You're gonna, you wanna have a your fucking subscription base like quit by the end of the first day. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Hear me out. I have an I, I have a new idea. Okay, we, we might fix this. What if you did the PvP like Dark Souls? So here's here's what I'm saying. You play the so there's two components. There's a single player where you're out there leveling, you're grinding, you're doing your thing, you're you're going through an extraordinarily long campaign. Um, but once you get to a certain level of skill and you want to fucking stick your neck out there, and I mean that literally because you know the whole head chopping thing, um, you can like flip a switch in the game that allows people to summon into your game, like Dark Souls. Yeah. What about that? And if you well, die, I'll... if you die, you start over a la Diablo. Yeah, but I, I just think that since it's going to be a game based on PvP and that's going to be the focus, I th I don't think that you're going to get a long life with that game because, dude, like, you get a guy, you get level up. Like, think of, like, World of Warcraft. If, like, some of those people have had these characters since, you know, since the fucking servers first switched on back in fucking whenever. Early 2000. And, like, could you imagine if they did a mode to where, like, you could lose that character after, like, how many expansions now? <laughs> you, you ever you play World of Warcraft? I've, I've fucked with it briefly. Like, I don't hate it. I, uh, the only thing that really keeps me from playing it now is, like, I don't like the idea of having to pay for the game I've already fucking bought, you know, over and over and over and over again. I don't like the subscription-based shit. Yeah. But what, I, what I've been reading about that might drag me back in is they're doing a World of Warcraft classic. Yeah, they. I think where, that's out in open beta now. Yeah, it's in open beta now. And that really intrigues me, because, like, that's, that's about the era that I... Fucked around with it for like three or four months, and you like know, that. um, my friend Max. If they, brought it to the, if they brought it to Xbox One, I would certainly fucking play. My friend like, Max I played WoW laptop. for years. I have a laptop, and I'm just, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna buy another computer just to fucking play that. But if it did come out on like the, the X phone, yeah, I would, I would play it. Like I, I played a. Uh, I have a subscription to Final, uh, yeah, it was Final Fantasy fourteen on the PS4. I've played it for about four or five months. Did they charge you a subscription fee for that? Yeah, it was like six bucks. Oh. It was, real, it was like six or eight bucks. That's I wasn't like, yeah, it was like, you know, it was, it was low enough that it was a big fucking deal. Yeah. I, um, the only subscription, well, okay, I, I lied before. I played Eve on the PC. More recently, what uh, game? Eve, Eve Online. Yeah, yeah, dude. I've read, I read the cracked articles about Eve Online and the 
fucking douchebaggery that would go on. Yeah, the economic like, douchebaggery. Fucking money. Yeah, mm-hmm. people losing like thousands of fucking real dollars because of somebody blowing up their fucking spaceship. Man. Yeah. That game's really yeah. complicated. I couldn't get that, deep see, into it. That's the shit I'm surprised I didn't get people killed. Like, I've heard about people getting swatted and shit like that with Call of Duty and stuff, but, like, you don't put money into Call of Duty. Like, fucking EVE Online, like, those people who are losing their Titan ships and that, that costs, like, about two or three thousand dollars of real fucking real people money. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people, like, like, that guy that did that douchebag thing where he, he was, like, a incel. And, like, at the one moment, decided to, like, empty everybody's fucking bank accounts and blow up all their shit. Yeah, like, that that was a big deal. That, like, oh. it almost crashed the economy of the entire game. Yeah, because, like, they were the, like, top economic house. Weren't they? Yeah. They were, like, one of the most powerful guilds, or whatever you call them, corps. In EVE, they're called yeah. corps. Yeah, like that. See that kind of shit. That that should get somebody shot in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I understand driving to fucking where the fuck little uh, Thundercock sixty nine lives and go, knock on his phone. Are you Thundercock? Do you play E online? And then just boom, just fucking shoot him right in the fucking face. Sort that of reminds me of that you. scene in uh, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Say, like, are you? <laughs> Did you say? Are you Master Exploder sixty nine? <laughs> exactly. Oh no. fuck! All right, man. Well, it uh, we're almost at three hours. Oh shit! Seriously, two hours fifty one minutes is where we're at right now. So I think uh. I think we're going to go ahead and sign it off, so hold on for just a second, and uh, I'll be right back with you um, after I close this out. Uh, All right. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, Thank you for uh, subscribing and liking. Uh, Please remember to check me out on YouTube. It's Next Gen Retro on YouTube. Just search for that. You'll see my fucking beautiful bearded face. Um, Go on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. I say a lot of crazy shit. You know, I may or may not be on some psychedelic fucking mushrooms while I'm tweeting. You never know. Um, Twitter is NextGenRetro1, the number one, all one word, at NextGenRetro1. Um, Here on Twitch, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, go find me on Twitch. Twitch is fucking great. If you want to watch this shit live... Uh, you can find me at Next Gen Retro PDX on Twitch, twitch.tv slash nextgenretropdx. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for watching, subscribing, liking, share with your friends. If you want your friends to know that you watch a couple of fucking crazy people on the internet talking shit for three <laughs> hours, share it with them. Let them know. Be proud. Let your freak flag fly, motherfucker. Tell them, be like, look, man, I spent three goddamn hours listening to these dudes talk about nazis video games and fucking spaceships right what better way to spend your time what better way to invest in your future than watching this show thank you very much for coming i love each and every single one of you motherfuckers out there i hope you have a fantastic life i hope your wife loves you i hope your kids behave i hope your husband doesn't cheat on you thank you very much Have a great rest of your night.